Okay, you hear me now? Am I heard now? I hope the sound is good. I'm not sure why the sound went off. I, I was trying to fix the speakers, which some of you complain that uh, when I play music, the music doesn't come. All right, sorry guys for that. Uh, peace of Christ to you, all of you again, and uh, we apologize for no sound. Things happen. <clears throat> um, I see some people, they have comment about tea and coffee, which one they prepare in the morning. Uh, if you noticed yesterday, or today actually, uh, I lost my voice because I was speaking, uh, I was drinking too much coffee. A coffee is an acid, and if your throat is uh, sensitive, um, you can lose your voice, you know. The sound is still not good. Okay, I will make it stronger. Is it stronger now? Do you hear me? Do you, do you? Do you hear me? Do you, do you? It's good? Wonderful. I was going to sing for you. So you saved your life and you saved your morning from a song. I was going to sing because always when I sing, the voice works, you know. If I stop uh, singing, the voice doesn't work. Still my voice is low? I don't think so. I see the level here is good. Do you love me? Do you? Do you? Do you hear me? Do you? Do you? Do do you? Do do you? Do do you? Do you? Do yes we do. Yes we do hear you, but we don't love you. Absolutely not you. Yes you. Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, this picture actually is from the Philippines. And you know, Philippines have a very beautiful beaches, in case you do not know. And uh, additional to the Philippines have a very beautiful beaches, the Filipino people are very, very kind people. You know, I, me, myself, I spend good time in the Philippines. And um, I have a lot of friends there, actually. Uh, actually, the first time I met with uh, with people from the Philippines who would uh, take me to uh, churches, you know, like introduce me to churches, it was kind of uh, strange and weird. Um, you know, they contacted me, um, and uh, supposedly in a certain date we will be meeting uh, in a Starbucks. <clears throat> All right, Starbucks. So anyway, I went inside and I found a bunch of people sitting at a table and uh, obviously those are the people waiting for me. They were, I think, uh, six, six or seven, eight, something like that. And then I said with them, hello, how are you, etc. And they said to me, uh, your name? I said, a Christian prince. And they look at each other. And then one of them, he took the other one to the side. This is, this is later they told me about what they were talking about. The first one, he asked the second one. He said, is that his voice? He said, I think so. He said, are you sure? He said, well, yeah, this is his voice. This is, must be Christian Prince. This is, uh, you know. So they were not sure really, but they are like, this is his voice, right? You know. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Uh, <clears throat> your wife is a Filipina? Okay, good for you. Uh, actually, I met their very wonderful people. Um, one of the people I met in that day, actually, in the same day, um, if you are a Filipino, you will know him for sure. Uh, this person. Um, I'm sure he sounds familiar for Filipinos. He's a famous person in the Philippines. He's an actor, he is a TV host, uh, you know, uh, he have many drama program. So it was funny that, uh, you know, that someone is famous like, uh, like Mr. Uh, Marikimo, Kiyamo, uh, was very excited to, to see me and to talk to me. Uh, it should be, should be the opposite, it should be, I am the one excited to see him because he is the famous guy, he's an actor, he's very well known, you know. Yeah, so I met really wonderful people. 
And then, uh, you know, we met with many, many church leaders in the Philippines. And then things became more interesting. We met with very high official in the Philippines. Like last uh, last visit, I met with the um, uh, the head of uh, the founder of the uh, Philippine Constitu Constitution, and he was the uh, the vice president of the Senate, and his son is the vice pre president of the Sun to the, uh, now. And I met with the speaker of the president. Uh, I met with um, congressmen, senators, you name it and the foreign minister uh, of the Philippines. <clears throat> Are you at the beach now? No, actually, I have a video running. I, I love the sound of, uh, of the ocean. I love the ocean. You know, I'm, I am an ocean person. Uh, the ocean uh, is a beautiful. It's a signature of God. And uh, it brings you back to, uh, to nature, you know. Too many walls are, uh, around us, my friend. Too many walls, too many cars, um, you know. We need we need to go back to the nature. That's why I love those you know countries <clears throat> uh, like Philippines and um, you know anyway. Uh, I did not uh, go until now to Indonesia either, even though I I love to go, but uh, you know it's kind of dangerous for me, isn't it? I'm not sure if I will arrive in the airport, I will be arrested immediately or not. Yeah, I, I went to Boracay. I went uh, actually. I went to places in the Philippines. Even Filipino did not go there. I went to to, uh, to the to ISIS uh, a strong uh, hold land. Uh, I went to Mindanao. I went to Cagayan uh, de Oro, uh, the city where this uh, the, the ISIS took over it. I went to Boracay, I went to El Nido, I went to, um, I mean, where, where I did not go. Yeah, I went all over. Actually, in Boracay, I have a very exper uh, nice experience, because Boracay, for those who know, let me see if I can find you a picture. Boracay is a kind of a tourist uh, location, very nice island. But I had a seminar in the beach. But the seminar supposedly is going to be like a few people, to, you know, I will meet with them. And then they will see if they can invite me to their mega church. You know, so like it's going to be like maybe seven people, six people, you know. Uh, let us see. If we can find you a picture of Boracay. Yeah, this is a kind of, uh, you you will get the image. Actually, the video I play for you here is from Boracay. Here we go. Uh, let me be sure, is that in Boracay already? Uh, no, no, this one, I think this one is not. I think, yeah. I think this one was in Boracay. I'm not really sure, you know, to be honest with you. But anyway, uh, this is Boracay. So uh, supposedly I will meet with a bunch of guys who they are church uh, leaders and uh, it's a smaller group, you know, and we met, you know, we rented the small corner in, in a, you know, in the beach. It's like coffee shop in the morning and uh, supposedly they will listen to me and they will decide what, uh, what to do next. Uh, so we started, I think, five or six, and then they start texting friends who they are coming. It's like a church coming to Boracay. It's like a tourist uh, activity, church activity. So they start texting, and then the seven, they became 10, and the 10 became 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And the coffee shop keep adding church, you know, chairs to the point they said we don't have no more chairs, you know. So it was very interesting, and then you know they invited me to more churches, which is very nice. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, it, it is no real topic. We are just uh, having some, you know, nice uh, uh, talk with the people from Indonesia, Philippines, uh, India, uh, all Asia, as for sure people who they are awake in USA, uh, because people who they are in the in Europe, uh, they are in sleep right now. <clears throat> And I hope one day I will be able to go um, uh, to to Indonesia. 
but you know god knows how we can make it the noise in the background is an ocean is it annoying is it bothering you this is an ocean <clears throat> hey pinoy how are you Well, not all of them. Most of them, they don't know really much about Islam. Most most of Christians around the world, they have no idea really what Islam is about. You know? I remember in the Philippines, they told me there is a, a, a school principal, and he is a principal of a Christian school. Uh, they told me that this guy, is uh, he, he, uh, he always defends Islam. He is a principal of a Christian school, you know? So uh, he think Islam is really not what people say. So they invited him to my seminar. And uh, uh, we, we agree that, because I don't know him, I mean, how I will know that this is the guy? There's hundreds of people. So we agreed that when he, this guy, he came, who show, when he show up, uh, one of our friends, he will walk behind him in his chair and he will, ho he will, he will put his two hands on his shoulders like something like this you know to to tell me that this is the guy you know because i wanted to have a conversation with him in purpose anyway but things that uh, you know work in in uh, without uh, me asking him he start putting his hand up start asking questions and then he says to me so this is really islam i said as you see everything i'm showing you here is from the reference he said but this is not what they say to us this is not what they told me um, he told me I saw videos about science, uh, about Islam, uh, you know, is merciful, uh, treating Christian nicely. Um, I said, well, this is what they say to you. This is what they do in the bazaar. When somebody want to sell you something, you go to, uh, you know, you go to a car dealer. He will make you, he will, he will want you to buy the car. He will not tell you that this car is going to break down. Right? So anyway, this, this person, he was very much defending Islam and he think Islam is a great religion. And he's like a left liberal who think anyone speak about Islam is a phobia person. He have a phobia, you have a problem. Anyway, he attended my first seminar and then my second seminar and then my third seminar. And then he says, uh, you know, he, he told me, Sometimes we think we are educated. It turned that our education was education of a bunch of fools. And thank you very much. I'm not going to attend any more of your seminars because it's really painful for me to remember how I was defending this stupid religion. So I have enough of it. And um, um, I, I feel really bad about how I used to defend it you know, in front of Christians, misleading them. Yeah. So anyway, like uh, generally speaking, Christians everywhere, they do not know much about Islam. But this is not their fault. It's the fault of the churches they go to. You know, our churches, uh, go go to any church. They don't talk about Islam. Nobody talks about Islam. They don't talk about anything, actually. You know, it's, uh, most of churches, they do traditional service, reading some verses from the Bible, speaking about being good and being bad, uh, how to be close to God, a few words, you know, make a prayer, go home, right? So churches today, sadly, uh, okay, we will turn off the, the video, no problem, as long as you guys are bothered by the waves. All right, uh, so the churches today, they are not doing their job as a church. Uh, they are doing just a service, like a prayer service. And this is not what the church was supposed to be made for. You see, the Church of Christ is where Christ, he stand, he teach, he preach. Um, not sit down, sit, uh, stand up, sit down, stand up, like Muslims, you know, rituals. Uh, you know, they turn, they turn the, the the real, you know, teaching of Jesus into rituals, into just a service, into like, uh, okay, we remember God once a week. That is not really a church. Church is... Uh, community of Christians joining together, discussing things have to do with the Lord. That is the church. 
So, you know, what happened that in our churches, you know, these days, there is no education. Your son, your daughter, your wife, you, yourself, you go to the church, you spend your life 20 years there, but you did not learn really anything. You did not learn about Jehovah's Witnesses, about uh, the Mormon, about Islam, about, you know, nobody teaching you. So when somebody, a Muslim or Jehovah's Witnesses come to your door, you do not know what to say to them. On the other side, those who they are anti-Christianity, they are very well prepared. They are very well educated and they are trained to attack. And in the same time, you have no idea. So it's very easy for them to, uh, to, to punch you in the face and you have no idea how to, you know, to return or to defend yourself. This is the case with Muslims too. You know, Muslims since an early age, they will say to him the Christians are kuffar, they corrupt the book, etc. So there's a lot of attack on us since very early age. A Muslim, all his religion actually and his prayer is based on attacking us. Islam is not based on praying to God. Islam is based on attacking Christians and Jews and non-Muslims. This is Islam. If there's no enemy in Islam, there's no Islam. You know, an enemy is a must. It's like, you know, you want to make a soldier uh, motivated to go for war. You need to find an enemy first. Otherwise, wh wh who needs a soldier, right? So Islam as a cult based on violence needed an enemy. And that enemy was from whatever around. This is why we never see Muhammad speaking about Hindu. But Hindus was exist in his time. But he never spoke about Hindus because they are not there. Uh, he don't know them. He never heard of them. So his his uh, his uh, his enmity is limited to those who they are. He knew about them. Uh, in the same time, we as a Christians, <coughs> uh, we go to church. They teach us to love everybody, which is wonderful. To pray for everybody, including Muslims, which is wonderful. That's 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 a good thing. But they don't teach us really how to answer questions. Nobody answer questions. <clears throat> and then suddenly the Christians, they found themselves under attack. Suddenly there is a, the, in the West, like we heard about Didat. And Didat make like, oh, big deal, like Didat. You know, Didat is a potato. I can I can break him pieces with, without even uh, opening a book. But Didat, he was debating people who have no idea what Islam is about. So it was only just an attack on Christianity and nothing against Islam. This is what, what make Didat look like he's strong. He knew what he's talking about. But when Didat, he did debate an Arab Christian, Anish Sharush, Anish Sharush, he whipped the floor with him. And he made him shish kebab, even though Anish Sharush is not really that much like powerful person in, in Islam. But even though, because he's a Christian minister, you know, even though Anish Sharush, Sharush he was able not only to break the, 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 uh, uh, the that pieces, the dad did not show up for a second debate, which was scheduled. Uh, then, you know, we, people like me, we started making the revolution. And today we have a revolution to expose Islam. And all this is over. Thanks to the internet. Thanks to, like, we can have life in YouTube. This is something new. <clears throat> Just a few years ago. <clears throat> Before that, it was, you know, very hard. <clears throat> I remember in order to, uh, uh, to, make, uh, to make a video, I used to hold a camcorder in my hand. If you go and see, there's a video, it's called uh, Christian Prince Videos in Iranian TV. You know, there's, there's a... <clears throat> Uh, there is an uh, organization called Minimar. They collect videos from satellite and they translate them, specifically about Islam. So suddenly one day somebody sent me, he said, do you know that your video appear in the Iranian TV? I said, where? So they sent me the video. And if you look at that video, you will see uh, I was recording the screen by using a camcorder. So I hold the camera in my hand. And then I record the, the, the screen. And then after that, I have to load the video in the computer. And after that, it takes several hours to, uh, to uh, convert the video to do editing. And then it takes other several hours to load it in the internet. <laughs> you know? 
What's your point of view? Should our government return Indonesian citizen who support ISIS in Syria? Well, you know, uh, your government, they should know that getting those people back uh, will establish an ISIS in Indonesia. But I believe the question is how those people were able to go all the way to Syria unless ISIS already are there in Indonesia. You see, in order to have a young man to go and fight in Syria, you need somebody who recruit them, which means already ISIS is very well established in Indonesia. So they take them or not, ISIS is there. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you want to fight Islam is not about fighting those fighters. Because you kill one, then will come, will come after him. The, to fight Islam is to fight Islam, not Muslims. I understand that we have a, you know, we have to find the terrorists, etc., and you know, eliminate them. But this is alone will, will not be enough because as long the ideology is exist, more terrorists will be there tomorrow. So the best way is to show the Muslims that this is stupid religion. You are just killing yourself for no one. There's no versions. There's no private part waiting for you and you are just a fool. If you if you make it clear for those people, then ISIS is dead. You know? Give me a TV station in Indonesia and you will see I will demolish ISIS. But, you know, just go and shooting and killing. Uh, you kill one, there's 10 will be tomorrow. Right? Uh, <clears throat> anyway, always, you know, intelligence is needed in any kind of war warfare. And uh, if you are just a person who depends on your muscles, you will be in as a fool. And that's what happened to those jihadists. They think because they have a clashing cough in their hand, they think they can fight the whole world. And then they end in a very tr troubled situation. And now there is 60,000 of them jailed by the Kurdish alone. And more than 100,000 jailed by the Iraqi Shia. And they are raping their women. You know, the Shia in Iraq, you know, they are taking revenge. They are taking revenge from those ISIS. Because ISIS, they rape their women. They torture them. They burn them alive. They kill them. So there's a lot of revenge involved, you know. So now, uh, here we go, ISIS, they came, Allahu Akbar, Jihad, if Allah is with us, you know, we will conquer, Allahu Akbar, and etc., and songs, and people, and those people think, that's it, that they can take the whole world. Soon, Allahu Akbar, we will be in Rome, and, you know, soon we will be in Tel Aviv, and soon we will be in the White House, and they end in the toilet room, in, 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 the, in the bathroom. So, you know, my fear is not really ISIS. ISIS has always exist. ISIS is just Islamic State, that's, that's ISIS. It's an idea, it's a dream of every Muslim who believe in Islam to establish a state. And this state is uh, to, to conquer. Islam is a government. It's not, Islam never was a religion. Islam is a government and based on gang system. Supremacist, the Arab are the supremacist. They will take over. And the rest who they are Muslims is just to serve the Arab. You know, if you notice when... Uh, who is the head of the Islamic state? Al-Baghdadi. Okay, where is al-Baghdadi from? He is an Arab. Who is the head of Al-Qaeda? Osama bin Laden. Where is Osama bin Laden from? He is an Arab. But that guy was in Afghanistan. Shouldn't the head be an, uh, an Afghani? No, an Arab. You know? Because this is an Arab cult made by the Arab for the Arab and the rest is just to serve the Arab. You go to uh, Indonesia right now, you will see someone who is an Indonesian he carry an Arab name. He is saying Arabic word, even though he do not know what they mean. Like, I don't know if you remember, uh, in Pakistan, they send an ambassador to Saudi Arabia. And the, the, the Saudi government, they refused him. Why they refused him? Is that because he is a bad person? No. Is ugly? No. His name. Those Arab, those Arab control the the the, the, the Islamic culture. The, the Islam is an Arab culture. Islam is, you know, when you say you are a Muslim, you are controlled by the Arab it, immediately. So the guy, his name is, I'm not going to say the word in Arabic, is the biggest penis. This is his name in Arabic. So they told the Pakistani how we are going to say that the king is shaking hand with the biggest penis. 
So those Muslim, they start using names, Arabic names. They do not know what they mean. And they end with very funny names. You can search it right away. Pakistani ambassador rejected by Saudi Arabia because of his name. What his name mean? You can, you will see it. You know? Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are controlled by the Arab. Uh, I remember there, there is a there is a guy. He is he went to Al Bosnia to to uh, to learn. At that time, it was Yugoslavia, and he is a student. His family they are not for some reason they could not send him money for some time. So he started looking for a job. They told him we need an imam in the mosque, <clears throat> but the guy is an Arab Christian. All what they want is somebody who speak Arabic. They th they think anyone who speak Arabic is a Muslim. The guy, he could not find a job, so he accepted to be the imam for the Muslims in the mosque in Al Bosnia. He go inside the mosque, he say, Hum was falafil, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, etc. And those people, Ameen, Ameen, etc. And he got his sari. Hmm? Just because in Arab, he got the job as an imam, but he's a Christian, he was making, he, he was making fun of them in the mosque. And those people, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, khayran ya shaykh ya, you know, so they, they knew a few Arabic word, and that's it, you know. <clears throat> so, you became an enslaved by the Arab by accepting Islam. And look what the, what the you know, uh, Indonesian uh, people, as an example, they have a long heritage, they have their own culture, uh, they have their own tradition, their music. The second Islam enter a place, you have to forget about everything. Is that true? If you want to practice Islam, you cannot practice anything from your heritage as an Indonesian. The clothes will change, the world will change, the names will change. You cannot sing music too. I mean, if you're singing music, if you're Indonesian and you are a Muslim and you are singing the music, you are going to go to hell, my friend. Muhammad he says that music is the you know is the instrument of shaitan. You know, we are not making things up. Find me one Indonesian Muslim who don't listen to music. It's impossible. Right? Actually, Muhammad, he claimed that time will come and the Muslims, they will listen to music and Allah will make them pigs and monkeys. Did you see any Indonesian Muslim who listened to music? Allah made him pig or a monkey? Hmm? Do you see it? Obviously, Muhammad is a fraud. Some agree for humanity. I mean, there's nothing is called for humanity. Those people, they deserve execution by law. They killed a lot of people. They rape a lot of people. They should not even give a chance to live. You know, how in the world, if somebody kills somebody, you execute him. But a criminal who killed hundreds of people, or maybe thousands, you let him go back home? That is stupid, my friend. That is stupid. The whole world be you know became hypocrite. They don't know what need, they need to do. They should bring the children and the women who did not involve the, the women who did not involve in killing because many of those women they are killer, criminals too. Children bring them you know they are your children. Take care of them, teach them so they will not be terrorists like their parents. But um, even if you take them back, you have to punish them. The one who killed people, he should be killed, and this is the penalty. This is the justice. You know, the one who did not do anything, you know, bit him maybe in jail for some time, educate him, teach him, maybe you can help him. Uh, but uh, things have to be in the in the right way. 
Uh, well, you know, the Muslim, they dislike my video, doesn't matter what I say. <laughs> even if I, uh, even if it's good morning, <laughs> they are Muslims. <laughs> Actually, if they didn't do that, they are not Muslims. Something, I mean, it, it's it is not right, not right, not to do something harm. But anyway, you know, for me, the dislike of a Muslim is an honor, because that's mean I'm saying the truth. If you give me a like, that's mean I'm being hypocrite. But look with me in this hadith here. Muhammad making it clear that those who play with music and instrument uh, and listen to music and songs and singing girls, Allah will make them pigs and monkeys. When the last time we saw somebody, he is an Indonesian or Filipino or Bangladesh or Indian or anywhere in the world, he listened to music and Allah make him a pig or a monkey. Hmm? You know, there is uh, there is tens of thousands of Muslim singers and Billy dancers. So Allah will make you a pig for listening, but He will not make the the, the singer himself a pig. You know what I mean? This is a religion from the cave time. Muhammad, he used those things just to control people, to make them do nothing. The only joy you have in Islam is sex, food. That's it. You know, when I was a kid, uh, the Muslim, they have their Eid, right? Eid, their holiday. I mean, I look at this holiday. What this holiday is about? There's nothing. In the best scenario, they will take the kid to the park where he can play with the swing. That's it. The whole holiday is food. Nobody see you, you see nobody. Only family, they gather together, they eat like elephants, and then they snore, and that's it. And this is the holiday. In the same time, we notice that we as a Christians, we are happy people. Because, you know, religion either can take you to the cave time and make you like a concrete idiot or make you a person who enjoy and you learn how to make happiness, bring happiness to your life. If you go right now in the Middle East, you will find that every Muslim house have a Christmas tree. Because they want happiness. They are people like us. They have emotion. They have feeling. Islam bring no happiness. Islam is just a stupid cult. You know, do this and do this and they will go to heaven right and then what you will go to heaven and the funny the funny the, the contradiction that there's things you cannot do here which is supposedly bad but you can do there but it's supposedly good as an example it is bad to listen to music here it is bad to drink wine here but in there you will do nothing except drinking wine and having sex Right, and the hypocrite Muhammad he used to have singing girls in his house singing for him. The caliphate of the Muslims they have thousands of pretty dancers. Hmm. How many people here from Indonesia? Give me one, please. Let us see. I wish there's an option here so we can uh, make a, like an easy. Account, but it's impossible. I am assuming maybe we have at least 200 people from Indonesia. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, look, I, I am like Muhammad. Muhammad, he looked at Jibreel, he found that he have 600 wings from one shot. How he was able to count them, I have no idea. Let me see. I think we have 600 people from Indonesia now. All right. <clears throat> hey, Koda from Jakarta. How are you, my friend? I, you know, like, I like, I like Jack, and, uh, but I, I don't know about Arta. 
So, but uh, you know, anyway, it's good. It's good. Like Jack and Arta, they make one city. Como esta? From Ilu Ulu, city in the Philippines. Yeah. How are you, Carlo, from Ilu Ilu? Yeah, in the Philippines, there's nice names, actually, which is uh, like Ilu Ilu. I don't remind me about this, uh, uh, my friend uh, from Ilu Ilu. I remember once I was asking somebody, they, I asked for tea and the tea did not come. So I said, where is my tea, tea? And they said, no, sir, don't say that. I said, why? They said, don't say that. So what the heck, what is that? Don't say that again. And I was repeating it, you know, but I didn't know what it's mean. You know, I'm just asking, where's my tea? I mean, where's my tea? But I repeat the word twice. It turned to be that the word tea, if you repeat it twice, it's a bad word. It's the private part. So imagine you are asking a bunch of girls, where is my... <coughs> <coughs> this is why, you know, speaking in a country, you know, in different language, you have to be careful. You might think you are saying nothing, but for them it might be a big deal. <coughs> yeah, I was asking for my tea, you know, so I would say, where's my tea? And then I repeat the word twice because I was upset, you know, or I'm waiting for it, you know. I said, no, sir, don't say that. I said, what? Say what? Don't say that, sir. Didn't say that. You know. <laughs> and they are laughing and they put their head down. And I said to myself, what's wrong, what's wrong with those people? I'm just asking about my tea, man. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, in, in languages, it's, uh, things can be uh, confused. Actually, once uh, I have a, f a friend from, you know, the, the old days when you used to used to have a VCR, you know, VCR video. So I found the videos in the libraries in Arabic. It's a, it's an Egyptian movie. The American guy, he is from the church. He came to my place and, you know, he visited me. He said, so what is this? I said, this is, those are Ameri uh, Egyptian uh, movies, but if you want, you can take them. They have subtitle in English. I said, okay. He said, there's nothing wrong there. He said, absolutely, I will not uh, let something, you know. So anyway, he took the videos, and then he called me. He said, you told me nothing wrong there. I said, yeah, nothing wrong. He said, do you know what they were calling one of the people? They keep saying, they keep saying the word the P-U-S, uh, you know, uh, why? I said, uh, <laughs> I said, this is the name of the actor. <laughs> this is a very well-known word in, in Egypt. Actually, there's a very famous actor. This is her name. So when you hear it, you think they are using the, you know. Yeah, so like different language can be really mean something else. <clears throat> you have one question. Samar Ibrahim, Ibrahim, how are, how are you, Samar? What what is your question? Give me your question, Samar. <clears throat> Welcome from Davao. How are you, my friend? Very beautiful. I, I love Davao. Actually, they have a, the 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 air there was really very fresh and nice, not like Manila. Yes, Samar. What do you want? What do you want? Uh, I am here. What do you want? Give me the question. What verse from the Quran ISIS was learning from? All the Quran. <laughs> this is the manual of ISIS. <laughs> verse. What verse? My friend, you're funny. A verse will make ISIS ISIS. The whole Quran is ISIS. Muhammad is the first ISIS member. Where Waraka get it from was, was Jibreel. Ah, okay. Yeah, Samar, she is asking question here. I, I assume that this is a lady because this is an Arabic uh, name for a female. Uh, obviously, Waraka ibn Nufal is the real father of Muhammad. If you have my book, Deception of Allah, you will see why I believe in that. If you notice that anything in the beginning of Muhammad's life, it's about Waraka. Waraka is everywhere. Even when Muhammad was a kid, they lost him, they found him with Waraka. Muhammad became a prophet, Waraka. 
Muhammad received Quran, waraqa. Muhammad saw the angel, waraqa. Who is the one who tell Muhammad what, what he saw, waraqa. So here you will see that waraqa. This is the most standard hadith here. It says waraqa was the son of the paternal uncle, and obviously he is the one who married him, or he have a, he have to do with it, with marrying Khadija, her father brother who during the pre-Islamic period become a Christian. In fact, he did not become a Christian. He became Nasara. And he used to write the Arabic writing and he used to write of the gospel in Arabic. That is the Quran. Do you see it? This is the Quran. How are you, my friend? My friend, my friend, comforter spirit. How are you? Thank you. Be, take care of your friend and your, yourself in Singapore. You know, we, we hear bad news about the... The virus is spreading so be careful my friend so you see here uh, Samar uh, Waraka obviously he is the real father of Muhammad and he is establishing his sect in Arabia the Nasara sect and you know the things between Muhammad and Waraka was so powerful to the point when Waraka he died Muhammad he tried to commit suicide the same hadith here you will see this is Sahih al-Bukhari hadith number 6982 it says that when Waraka he died the inspiration divine was also post post why why Allah will stop sending Quran because of Waraka he died you see how obvious it is so uh, Waraka died no more Quran and Muhammad became so sad. Why he became so sad? Because Waraka was his real father. In the same time, there's no more Quran. He became so sad, and we have heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountains. And every time he went up to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down, Jibreel would appear before him and say, Oh, Muhammad, <laughs> you are indeed the messenger of Allah. So what is the reason Muhammad trying to commit suicide? Because he don't believe he is a messenger of Allah. The message is so clear. So Waraka was writing the Quran and that is the gospel in Arabic. There is a very famous uh, writer. He is a Christian minister. Uh, he's uh, from Syria. Uh, his name, uh, I believe, Durra al-Haddad. He, he, uh, uh, he wrote a book. I believe the name, in name is Al-Islam uh, Da'wa Nusraniya. Al-Islam Da'wa Nusraniya. Islam is a, a Nasara, um, let us say, invitation, or let us say, establishment. Very interesting book. You should read it, maybe, if you speak Arabic. <clears throat> I hope I did answer you, uh, Samar Ibrahim. Anything else? Nasara are not Christians. You see, the, the Muslims, they are very confused people. They are the same, uh, they, are, they are the most confused people about anything. They keep saying that Christians are Nasara. We are not Nasara. And actually, you know, if you, if you ask them, why the word Nasara, what the word Nasara mean? Just to show you how funny the Muslims are. Anyone knows what the word Nasara mean? Anyone who vote for Donald Trump, he cannot be a real Christian. Saudi Arabia uh, commit a horrific genocide in Yemen and Donald Trump supplying the Saudi with English weapons worth in 100 billion. Mr. Uh, Jack Jansson, uh, I think you are the idiot of the village. And I will tell you why. Saudi Arabia is fighting Al Houthi and Al Houthi, he keeps shouting death to America. So if I am Donald Trump, not only I will give them, sell them weapon for 130 billions, I will sell them as much as they want. You are a stupid and you are an idiot. Those Al Houthi in Yemen, each time they shoot at anything, even if it's a, if it's a rock, they say death to America, death to Israel. So the, why he will not help the Saudi? Those people they wish death to others. So why you are being very friendly? I mean, they, they are they are people of death. You seek death, you die. So the criminals are fighting each other. So it's for the benefit of USA if to, to let the criminal Saudi fight the criminal Yemeni. And you watch. And you are a donkey. 
<laughs> Go watch any video. Death to America, death to Israel. Even he's shooting at a Muslim. The Yemeni fighters, they are shooting at a Muslim, an Arab like them, and yet they are saying death to America. <laughs> It's like you know, saying uh, shooting at the duck and saying uh, death to the to the lion. The pagan is you, you black stone kisser. Get out of here. <laughs> Shia, Shia. Anyone who do vote for Donald Trump is a terrorist. <laughs> I mean, the most funny, stupid belief is the Houthi, those Shia. They are shooting at Muslims. And they are shouting, death to America, death to Israel. I mean, you're killing a Muslim. He's, he's killing a Muslim like him. And then they shout, death to America. But you idiot, you are not shooting at the American. You are shooting at a Muslim. Death to America, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm losing subscribers left and right. I don't know. I think I'm losing subscribers from the left. Especially the ones their name is Jack Sparrow. <laughs> hey, hey, Jack Sparrow. As long as I'm losing subscribers, why you are here? Are you stupid or what? <laughs> no, my friend. My subscribers are skyrocketing. I have tens of thousands, my friend. What are you talking about? I just started I have like you know it's it's not even people are not preparing for me you know and look how many people are watching watching potato like your profit <clears throat> by the way you did not answer me about now about uh, as long as your name is Jack Sparrow I ask you about the fountain of youth which Muhammad he spoke of do you believe in it Jack Sparrow or it was just a movie this is your prophet as long as you will not change your name this is your prophet claiming that there's a fountain if you drink from it, brother, you will live forever, brother. Hmm? What do you think? <clears throat> do you agree with your prophet or you, you agree that your prophet is a fraud? Is your prophet losing subscribers? How many Muslims they left Islam because of a Christian prince? So you can imagine how many subscribers not only they don't like Muhammad no more, they fight him. Fountain of youth, my friend. Who is in the donkey who want to believe that there's a fountain of youth? You drink from it, you live. Even if you are dead. Are you there, Jack Sparrow? You will go in the dead mood now. <clears throat> Ibradar, I am Prophet Muhammad. I'm going to tell you and I will send you a messenger. His name is Jack Sparrow. He will make a movie. It's called The Pirate of the Caribbean. And in the movie, he will mention for you that there is a fountain. It's called the Fountain of Youth. Hmm. Do you see it? And then the water called Ma'ul Hayat. Water of life. If, 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 if. I'm lying. I'm showing the screen, you idiot. <laughs> Guys, I'm lying. <laughs> it's in the screen in front of you. And this is Sahir Bukhari. You idiot. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Here we go. This is the hadith. Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number 6573. And bingo. And this is the water of life, brother. Water of life? I mean, obviously, you're a prophet, is a real prophet. Hmm. <clears throat> this is alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is a fraud. Islam Wahid is, is your Skype is open? No, my Skype is not open, my friend. Why you wanna call me? You wanna call me? Do you have an answer for the fountain of youth? Who is a Muslim? He can tell us why Muhammad he come with such a lie. Either you say that Muhammad is lying, or you accept that there's a fountain of of youth. Uh, you drink from it, you became alive, even if you are dead. 
Who is a Muslim believe in this story? Any Jack Sparrow here? Okay, Islam, I will turn the Skype just for you. Give me a second, please. <coughs> <clears throat> Usually Muslims when they call me they don't really talk no more. They play a sound a video or something, you know. Childless. But you know we give them a chance. <coughs> <clears throat> All right, Mr. Islam, the Skype is open. Text me, please. Text me and I will call you back. <clears throat> <coughs> Tell me what is your name in Skype so I will answer you because I have too many texts. All right. Where are you? What if you cannot find me? This is your business. I mean, what what they can do? I will go and search for you. <clears throat> People they text me and say, "Is that a sky, uh, CP?" Yeah, it is me. And so Islam, so Nasara mean I will go back to this topic. Let us see after we answer this person here. Are you going to call me Islam or not? I will give you five minutes to find the name and call me, otherwise I will go out of Skype. Now we go back to Nasara. <clears throat> My friend, all people, they can find me and they can call me. What make it public? Just add debate TV and call me. Make it public. And this is not you. Anyway, Nasara. <clears throat> Nasara supposedly mean the helpers, the helpers of Jesus. Let us see, we have somebody. Hello? Hello? Yes? Hi. Hello, you are live on air. Who is talking? You are live on air. Mute YouTube, please. Okay. Um, doesn't the Bible talk about water? Yeah, the Bible talk about water, so. So then, why are you making fun of the of the of, the, of Islam? The Bible says there is a water. If you drink from it, you will become youth and you will live forever. Yes. Where it says that? The fountain of life. Where is that? 
in the Bible. We just talked about it. Where, where? Show me the verse. Yeah, please. Okay. Um, Jesus talks about it. My friend, don't tell me Jesus talk about it. Just tell me where I, I am. I am ignorant. I want to learn from you. <clears throat> where in the Bible it says there is a, a fountain of water. You drink from it. You became young and you live forever. In Revelation twenty one, uh, one. Hmm. Revelation twenty one, right? And verse one. All right. Read it for us. <laughs> you read. No, I do not know. I, you know, I'm ignorant. I don't know how to read. Go ahead. I want you to read it. Well, I, you know, I want to see from you where you get this from. You no, know, you read it for me. I don't see it there. Then the angel showed me a river of the water of life. You are talking. You are. You are talking about Revelation ch chapter twenty-one, right? Chapter twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. All right. Read for us. Go ahead. Then the angel showed me a river of the water of life, hmm. as crystal as clear, flowing from the throne of God hmm. and of the Lamb. Okay. Where in there it says this is a water, which is if you drink from it, you became youth. Then what? If you drink it, what happens? To well, you? you know, isn't it the Quran says we made everything, every everything living thing from water. This is the water of life. Everything is made in from every living thing is made from water. So the water which all all of us we have our life from as a source of life is this water. However, this is a book of Revelation. This is about metaphorical things, not about real water. But if you want to take it as a water, uh, nowhere it's there. There it says that this is a water. If you drink from it, you became youth and you will live forever. But, but, but what is the water of life? What happens if you drink life? The water of life, Jesus said, the one who drink my water, he will live forever. Which means the one who accept me and believe in me, that is my water. Okay, hmm. and that's the same thing as the hadith you talked about. No, here we go. This is about physical fish. The fish was dead, and the fish, some water fell on it, and the fish became alive. And the prophet, his name is Al-Khadr, he became, he, he, his name is Al-Khadr because uh, he drank from that water, and this is why if he sit in any place, uh, he make it a green. That's why they call him Al-Khadr. Khadr means green. Okay. Yeah, so what we are talking about here. A real fountain of life, if you drink from it, you will be young and live forever. And in the Bible, this is about metaphorical thing, that the source of everything is God. All life is coming from God. And everything is created is created by him and for him. And that what it is clear and crystal, which means he is pure, he is holy, proceeding from the throne of God. So you are comparing between two things have nothing to do with each other. No, here. No, okay, okay. No, 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 no. You see, here, this is a physical water. You drink from it, and you be even the fish. The fish was dead. Do you see the story? Do you see the story? Yeah, people okay. will drink the water to oh, live. No, okay, okay. Where is where, where? Who in the world want to believe that there's a fountain? If you if you put some water from it on the fish, the fish will come back alive. Do you really believe? Do you really believe in this? What? You believe that there is a there is a fountain of water. If we take some drop of the water, we throw it at the fish. The fish will become alive. If Allah wills it, then why not? Okay, but you see here we have, we have a problem. Allah is God, and Allah He says every one of you is going to face death, and then we find that there is something have nothing to do with Allah because this is not from Allah. This, this is, a, is the afterlife. No, this is this is Musa's Musa. This is Musa's when he was a prophet for Israel. Allah He sent him to learn from a prophet. His name is Al Khadr, and He told him, "Take with you a fish, and when the fish, you, when you lose the fish, this is the sign you will find Al Khadr." So He took the fish with him, which is a whale, and then some water of the water of life dropped on the fish, and the fish became alive, and then He He followed the fish uh, uh, <laughs> trace. Because the the trace the fish imagine has a trace in the ocean, the ocean became like a rock. Read the story. So you are calling me, and you cannot explain anything except saying if Allah He want. Well, Allah He cannot have that. Why? Because the Muslim they claim that everyone will die, and wama min kumu illa illa. Every one of you, which means he is going to taste the death. But this fountain is against that because 
Every one of you can live forever. Then Al Khadr, he drank from this water. He's alive. He was in the in the funeral of Noah. He was in the funeral of uh, of Moses. He was in the funeral of uh, of Muhammad, and he's alive until now. So this is the most funny story. Obviously, it's a fairy tale story taken from the story of Gilgamesh. Um, but okay. So what you're talking about is the water is um the thing that you're that you're having trouble with is that the water is on earth right it is on earth this moose my, my, my friend the story here is saying that he will go to al bahrain you know al bahrain it's a country it's here it's in, in next to emirat you know al bahrain Okay. Okay. So this is Al Bahrain. Allah He told Musa. Musa He said He said a, a person He asked him, "Is there someone He knows about Allah more than you?" Musa says, "No." Then Allah He says to Musa, "No, there is someone. He is my slave." And uh, Musa He said, "Okay, I send me to him. I want to learn from him." He will go to read the story from the beginning. The problem you did not take the effort yourself to read the story from the beginning. Allah He sent him to uh, to his to his servant. His name is Al Khadr. So he will learn from him, you know, and this is was on earth. This is Moses is not in heaven. This is this is on earth. So he went all the way to Al Bahrain and he have a servant with him. Moses, he have a servant. He have I, a, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see what the problem is. The problem is this is a fairy tale that there is a guy. His name is Al Khadr and he drank from the fountain of youth. But and, you're, and, and, you're, you have double standard because the book of Revelation, if you read it, talks about dragons. This is all oh, this is all metaphor. There is no dragon. There is nothing. This is all metaphorical. You know, you, you are trying to make it literally. But this is, as you see, it's a book of Revelation. This is not about something happened. It's not about something, you know, uh, uh, like a physically real. This is, so the book of Revelation this is, is fake. this is, this is, no, you are the fake. The, the book of Revelation about God in a metaphorical way everything there is a metaphorical you know when you say that the throne of god do god really have a throne chairs have four legs in islam yes in christianity no so for us the throne of god present the authority for you the throne of god is carried by eight by eight mountain goats literally it's okay though you can argue the same thing for islam that's metaphorical no you see you have to prove it uh, you see for me you, you can say it's a metaphor metaphor metaphorical but no muslim says it's a metaphorical you are the only one making this, this, uh, things up so for us this is our belief you can go right now open any interpretation for the verse you are reading all of them they will say the same it's not like christian prince is coming to you with his own belief when you speak to somebody about his belief you have to accept his belief now i'm asking you according to your belief is this a story metaphorical or real it can be interpreted as any way you want no it. it's not about uh, not about me i want it i'm saying according to islam according to islam not according to individuals me or you according to islam is this a story real or not it well it depends like if you read it it depends on how you No, interpret. there's nothing it's called you know the, the meaning when we ask a muslim sheikh is he going to say this is a real story happened or this is metaphorical he will say it's a real story and it happened not a single Muslim sheikh, he will say to you that this is not true. Okay, but do you, do you like have a stronger argument? What do you mean? Like this argument isn't strong. Okay, what do you want? Okay, choose a topic and we will go for, there for you. Just because I, li I like talking to you. Actually, you sound like a nice lady. And, uh, uh, you know, we can have a good conversation. Choose for me a topic which is a strong argument for you to prove to me Islam is true. You see, I'm not going to pick up my cherries against Islam. I want you to find me the most powerful thing for you as a Muslim you can convince a Christian with. What is that? Are you there? Look like we lost her. Hello? No, we did not lose her. What happened? Call me back, please, because I cannot see your uh, your, your name. <coughs> Hello. Hello. Yes. Did you hear? Did okay. you did you hear me? What I said? No, sorry. Okay, I was saying I'm not going to pick up my cherries against Islam because you know I can say something negative. I can choose something negative. I don't want to do that. I want you, by your help to show me something very positive, very good about Islam, to convert all those Christians who are listening 
to Islam. Choose your best so, and leave the so rest for me. So you believe in one God? You believe in one God? Yes. So this is the best argument you have? Of course. Okay. Well, there is a church. It's in there is a church in San Francisco. It's called the Church of Satan. They were they worship one God. His name is Satan. Secondly, okay, but that's not God. Okay. How we know that Allah is God then? What is the proof that Allah is God? The Quran is a linguistic miracle. Well, the Quran is full of uh, mistakes, my my, my 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 friend. The Quran. How how this Quran can be linguistic miracle? If you don't even speak Arabic, do you speak Arabic? I don't, but I heard uh, okay. Islamic you, uh, Muslim scholars all right. talking about how. Okay, look what the Arab they said about the Quran. The Arab was we were laughing at the Quran in the time of Muhammad. Is that true, or I'm making things up? Uh, they may have. Okay, so how it is a miracle, but yet the Arab are making fun of it. Because people try to deny God and try to make fun of him. But you just said so, you just said that the Quran is a miracle. How they can deny a miracle like this? Look what they said in chapter eight, verse number thirty-one. They, and they when our Jesus okay, hold on. Miracles, they call him no Satan, problem. No, no problem. Hold on. When our verses, the Quran, are recited to them, they say, "We have heard this Quran. You know, we have heard it. If we wish, we can say the like it." It is nothing but okay. the, but it is nothing. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It is nothing but the fairy tales of the ancient. Why they are saying this is the fairy tale of the ancient? But they didn't produce anything like it. Okay, I will go with you guys. They did not produce anything like it. Well, Muhammad himself, he copied from the Arab Quran. And you know what? I'm not going to use source from the from the infidels. I will use Islamic source to prove my point. Is that okay for you? Okay. All right. Okay. So if Muhammad he took from the Arab Quran, that's mean Muhammad is a fake prophet. Here we go. Okay. This is your prophet. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, very Sahih. It says that Umar said, the Caliphate, I agreed with Allah in three things. Or said, my Lord agree with me in three things. I said, O oh Allah, the messenger, what that uh, 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 you took the station of Abraham as a place of a prayer. And also I said, O oh Allah, messenger, God and bad uh, uh, presence, uh, presence visit you. Would you uh, uh, that you order the mothers of the believers to cover themselves uh, with veil? So the divine verses, hijab, came. And then, read carefully. And then he continues saying, uh, uh, the, the divine uh, uh, verses about hijab revealed, I came to know the prophet and had blamed some of his wives. So I entered upon them and I said, would you either stop troubling the prophet or else uh, Allah will give uh, uh, his apostle better wife than you? And when I came to one of his wives, she said to me, Oh, Omar, uh, uh, does Allah messenger have not uh, uh, what you could advise his wife that you advise him? And then you will see uh, uh, the verses came as I said. The verses came to Omar as he said to Muhammad. So Muhammad, Muhammad, he say a verse. The verse is taken from Umar word by word. Why Allah is taking Umar words, making it Quran? I thought nobody can make Quran like the Quran of Allah. Um, so basically in the Quran, doesn't it say that Allah, um, he uses <coughs> us as uh, vessels, like uses our hands? Okay, hold on. But you are the one who said to me, produce like it if you can. So if Allah, no, so okay. So look, look at the contradiction here. Allah, he hear Umar. Omar he make Quran Allah he take Omar words and he make it Quran but yet nobody can make Quran like Allah so who is the one who made the Quran Omar didn't make it Allah gave it to him no no it says my my Lord agree with me uh, Omar he said it why Omar is a prophet um I don't know he's not okay so he, and there's no way Allah he gave you know give it to him you are making things up now. Be careful. You know, the Muslims are watching and listening. So you cannot say Allah gave it to him because that will make him a prophet. This is what the prophet is about. So Allah did not reveal the Quran to Omar. He revealed it to Muhammad. Do you agree or not? Yes. Okay. So uh, Omar, how he received the Quran before Allah? Read carefully. It says, so the verses came the same as I have said, which means word by word. And this is so Sahih. Before, uh, before, before Amr said it, it was not the word of God. But but once Allah agreed with it, then it became the word of God. Amazing. Thank you very much, guys. When Omar said it, it was not the word of God. 
But when Allah, he said the word of Umar became the word of God. But but you just say it, nobody can make Quran like it. And so Allah, he is copying from Umar, Quran, making it Quran. So Umar is the one who... Oh, hold when on. Allah said it, it's not the same. No problem. No, it's the same. So if I say shish kebab, hummus, falafel, and then because I am just a Christian prince, and then Allah, he say after me, hashish, hummus, falafel, that will make it Quran. And my word is not Quran. That's funny. It will, if, if, if Allah says it, then it's not the same as a human saying it. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, first of all, Allah never said anything because according to your Quran, according to your religion, Muhammad, he never heard the voice of Allah. He received it from a man. He claimed to be uh, Muhammad. He claimed it's Jibreel. He came to him as a man. So he heard it from a man. A man, he said, the man, he said, the man, he said, and all of this was coming from Umar. So Umar is the one who made the Quran. Allah, he take the Quran of Umar and you are saying, before when Umar he made this verse it's not Quran yet but it's the same words word by word so when you say nobody can make Quran like the Quran of Allah it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a joke <clears throat> um, so you're just saying that if Allah said it well, it's you are saying that because this is your hadith, not my not my book, yeah, lady. It's your book saying that those verses came the same as I have said, which means obviously Muhammad he heard Omar saying those words. Muhammad he like it, he produce it as it is. He make it Quran. But then, if this hadith is saying that um, Omar uh, he wrote the Quran, then that means um, this is a fake hadith. Oh, here we go. So that's a good idea, guys. It's a fake hadith. Islam is fake. So if Sahih al-Bukhari, the most authentic book after the Quran is fake, that's mean we cannot trust anything in Islam. Okay, you know what? I will go with you. I will support you. Guys, this hadith is fake. What about the Quran? Isn't it the Quran says that the shaitan, he made Quran? No. Okay, let us see this verse. I want you to open with me. I don't know if you can see the screen or not. Chapter 2, verse 106. Chapter hmm. 2, <clears throat> verse 106. It says, okay. whatever verses or revelation, we do abrogate or cause to be forgotten. Who is the one causing the Quran to be forgotten? We never nullify a verse nor cause it to be forgotten. Unless we bring one better than it okay. or similar to okay. it. Okay, who is the one who caused the verse to be forgotten? Allah. Thank you very much. And why Allah he do that? Um, so basically, if if a verse was sent down for a particular period of time, mm -hmm. then at, a, at, at like after that particular period of time, then it will it, then it, it won't be uh, uh, necessary anymore. So okay. then it would change. Guys, the Quran is not necessary anymore. We, we throw it in the trash. Look what, look what is the verse is saying. It says similar to it. So, okay, I will give you an example. So, so it's like, hold it's hold like on. the Old Testament uh, and New what? Testament. Hold on, hold on. No, no. The Old Testament is there. Nothing changed. Uh, God did not make me forget it. It's there word by word. So listen carefully here what you said. Allah will make you forget the Quran. So he will make the same verse because it says similar. Does it say similar? But we don't know what similar means. Okay, no, we know what similar word he is he's using. He's using my language, Arabic. It's exactly the same or better. Okay, let's go by one by one. Allah will cause me to forget of this verse. Let us make a verse. You know, I'm not trying to insult, but in just to give you an example. Uh, eat at apple, it is healthy. Okay, Allah now he make me forget the verse. Eat apple, it's healthy. And now he will make a verse similar. Okay, eat apple. It is healthy. This is a similar verse. So what, what, what the point? Why Allah he make you forget Quran if you will make similar? It, it, it's for, an, it, like, um, if, if, if one verse is abrogated, mm -hmm. then he'll bring another verse how, um, that's how similar. It's, how it's abrogated? It in, in lady, if he says two, two options, look, listen carefully, you know, abrogated or caused to be forgotten. So those who they are caused to be forgotten, Allah, he will make something better or similar. Don't, don't mix things. So he will make so he will make you forget about eating apple. Eat, uh, Allah, he said in the verse number 10, chapter number 10, verse number 1, eat apple. Okay. Allah, he make you forget this verse. He make a, a new chapter. It's a chapter number 11, verse number 1. It says eat apple, but they are the same. Now. Allah is saying he will make similar verse, which doesn't make sense. This is a crazy talk. But if we go to the different verse, 
and later I will I will I will be back here to this uh, verse, but we, I'm trying to connect the dot to you so you can understand me. Okay. Uh, the Quran says that Allah He will delete the satanic verses from the Quran. For which one? Is that correct? For which? Allah He will delete the satanic verses from the Quran. Is that correct? Uh, what are you talking about, satanic verses? Exactly. Well, what are you talking about? Okay, G guys, did she say this lady, satanic verses? Did you say that or me? No, you said that. No, no, you are the one who said satanic verses, not me. You just said satanic. No, you are the one who said, are you talking about satanic verses? No, you said satanic, and I said, are you talking about... No, like, no, the, I, the I, I said, I said, is it true? My question was, is it true that Allah will dig the satan... They will delete the verses made by satanic? You said, are you talking about satanic verses? Yeah, so, okay. that, the, that's, so those are the lies. Okay, so, so you confirm. Okay, let's see if it's a lie. So this is a lie, guys. It's a lie. Read the verse with me. Chapter 22, verse number 52. Go ahead. I'm listening. Never did we send a messenger or, or a prophet before you, but when we... When he did recite revelation or narrated or spoke, uh, Shaitan threw in it. But all, uh, but Allah abolishes that what Shaitan throws. Then Allah establishes His revelations, and Allah is all knower, all wise. Okay, so Allah will abolish what? What Shaitan threw. Um, he threw where? Yeah. He, where he throw? It does not say. Okay, it says. Here we go. He recite revelation. It's revelation when he did recite the revelation or narrated or spoke shaitan he throws some falsehood in it where in it in it what uh, in the speech in the speech which is revelation okay okay so now it's confirming the quran that shaitan he made satanic verses and allah saying but allah abolishes that thank shaitan you very much wrote. no problem guys but allah abolish it okay question how Muhammad did not notice that this is satanic verses, yet Allah is the one who will abolish it. Look what happened. You're a prophet, he was talking. Shaitan, he put words in his mouth. Muhammad, he did not notice that this is not from Allah, which means it was a perfect Quran for him. And then after he speak, he went home. Few days after, Jibreel, he come to his house. He knocked at the door. Khabibi Muhammad, what you did Khabibi? He said, what? He said, the verses you say, those are not from Allah. Okay, hold on. The Quran says nobody can make Quran like the Quran of Allah. Who is going to be the judge? Muhammad. Because how we will know if this is from Allah or not? Muhammad is the prophet. Who, who's, who is better than Muhammad to recognize which Quran, which is not? Muhammad it himself. It does not say that Muhammad uh, knew that it was she. Uh, it does not say that Muhammad did not know that she turned through it. Thank you. Th no, it says he did not know. I can show you the interpretation. You want to show me the interpretation? Yes. All right, no problem. All right, give me a second, please. You see, here we don't talk from our own because that will not be right. As we said, when we debate Muslims, we debate them about their belief, not what we claim. All right. So we will go to the interpretation of the Quran and we will open it. <clears throat> I will put for you in front of you the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is official. This is not like a website made by somebody who is a Christian or, you know, this is very official. Okay. And we will see what happened. Just give me a second. <coughs> Let us hope that this website will open, will work, because usually sometimes it doesn't work. It take this is not like I wish you speak Arabic because I can show you all the interpretation in Arabic and you will die laughing. But anyway, we have to find it in English.
Well, look like the website here is not opening, so I'm going to open it in Arabic temporarily. Enter the okay. website open. All right. Okay. I will do it in an easy way, you know. I will search in front of you in Google. Search. Uh, uh, but I, I no, don't no. think that that's the only interpretation for this. No, no. I will get. I will show you any interpretation you like. Anyone, all of them. Actually, here we go. This website have all interpretation in one page. All right. But but. I don't think any scholar would say this is the definitive well, interpretation for right. this verse. Well, we will see. I mean, well, no. What, what do you mean? Any scholar says. So, you, do you must? Are you saying you Muslims? Every one of you make up make up his own mind about what he like. What you know, he make up a religion. Do you have a religion or you have uh, opinion? Well, yeah, there are different opinions, right? No. So, do, so you don't have a religion. It's called Islam. You have opinion about religion called Islam. Well, the, we, we follow what the uh, like the scholars they study. Okay, and they let us read together. Here we go. Finally, the website open so we can read. Uh, would you please read for me the screen? I put it for you on the screen. Oh, it's in Arabic. No, now uh, now it's in English. I just move. It's going to take maybe a second for you to see it. I still can't see it. Okay. Oh, there you go. Um, this is Tafsir al -Jalalain. It says. Okay. Yeah. Jibreel, um, Jibreel, let me let me make it short. You can read. You, you can you take your time. I will I will I will post the link for the 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 page in the in the chat so you can open it from your side. Here it says that Muhammad he recite. Worshipping the three daughters of Allah, Allat wal Uzza wa Manatu, the third. Their intercession is a must. This is what Muhammad said. It says, as a result, Shaitan cast them into his tongue, without his the Prophet being aware of the following words. Those are the high flying grass, al Gharaniq al Ula. Indeed, their intercession is is a, is a, is hoped for, which means Muhammad is worshiping the three daughters of Allah. Not only is saying words, he is saying it's a must to pray for them because they intercede for us, and they and so they the men of Quraysh, where where they are they are happy for this. And then Jibril, read carefully, please. Jibril, however, later later informed him the Prophet of his that this is Shaitan had cast into his tongue. Do you see it? Okay. Okay. So Muhammad, he did recite the verses. He went home. He have no idea what he did. But, 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 but how in the world that can happen? You see, Shaitan, he made him say words. Do Muhammad have ears? Do, do Muhammad, is, is Muhammad under control of Shaitan? Because if, she, if let's say by mistake, I say the word. By mistake. You know, sometimes we do it actually. Sometimes I want to say something, I say something else. Let us, this is happening. But Muhammad here is worshipping the three daughters of Allah. Like, you know, I can make a mistake about, I want to say number, uh, 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 you know, I, I want to say, I ate in this session. And then he went home as if nothing happened. Then Jibreel later, he came and he informed him that this is not from Allah. So the Quran confirmed that Shaitan, he throw verses in the mouth of Muhammad and Muhammad is the last one to know. What do you think? Um, so, so Allah and Azan and, 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 and Manat, they are not um, uh, goddesses. They they were the uh, pagan goddesses of um, that were uh, worshipped exactly, by the exactly, Arabs. Exactly. So, why Muhammad is worshiping them? So they, he was not. It was Satan who who put it in his, in his uh, tongue. In his, okay, no problem, guys. It's a Satan. So Satan in the mouth of Muhammad. So Muhammad in that moment he is a satanic prophet because he is speaking for Satan. Uh, no, Satan is speaking, not Muhammad. No, 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 no. Read carefully. He cast into his tongue the tongue of who? The tongue of Muhammad. It was the tongue of your prophet. Read carefully with me. Satan casting them into his tongue without the prophet being aware. So the prophet is controlled by shaitan. His tongue is speaking satanic verses. So your prophet at that moment is a satanic prophet of Satan. Shaitan speaking through Muhammad, using the tongue of Muhammad. Muhammad is talking, but the fact it is shaitan telling him what to say. 
That is a satanic prophet. Well, if this contradicts the the Quran, uh, which says that um, that that Satan doesn't have um, uh, 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 like power, authority over, over you. Thank uh, you very much. You see, you are helping me. So look, guys, she just said it clearly that Muhammad is a fraud because. Uh, no, the, the, the story is a fraud. No, no, no. The, the Quran mentioned the story that Shaitan he threw in his in, in his in his in his speech. What are you talking about? So the Quran says that Shaitan he have no authority over the good believers, except the criminals. Except the criminal. Inna ibadi, laysa laka alayhim sultan illa man attaba'aka min al gawin. Chapter fifteen, verse number forty-two. So this verse proving to us that Muhammad is a criminal. He is an evildoer because the Quran confirmed, and thank you very much for mentioning this verse. You are a very smart girl. That this verse confirming that Muhammad must be an evil satanic person because the verse in chapter 15, verse 50, 42, certainly you shall have no authority. Who is talking Allah supposedly to shaitan? over my slaves, any slave, any slave, any Muslim, except those who follow you, al Gawin. Who is the Gawin? You know, criminals, uh, mushrikeen, polytheists, the evildoers, etc. All kind of garbage. So Muhammad, in order for him to be controlled from shaitan, he have to be of the Gawin. And by your help, uh -huh. we prove it to be true. Um, so, uh, then that would mean okay, that uh, the verse does not say that um, Satan um, uh, talked. Uh, it does not say that Muhammad talked uh, on behalf of Satan. It said that Satan put the verses in his mouth. Okay, but but Shaitan, in order for him to do that, he have to have authority. The verse here says you have no authority. <laughs> This is talking about shaitan or shaitan. Or like a, shaitan. Or, this or is like a, this is shaitan. No, this is shaitan. Read the conversation. If you go 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 back a few verses, you will see that this is about shaitan. Here we go. Allah He said to Iblis. This is about Iblis specifically by it, name. It's Iblis. Iblis. Iblis is the first shaitan. You don't know who is Iblis. Iblis is the first shaitan. According to your religion, Iblis is the first Satan. And when he came to the earth, Allah He gave him a penis. And excuse my language. He gave him private part of a male in the in the left in the right leg and a private pair a male of a private part of a female in the left leg. So when he shake this with this, he enter this into that, and then he lay ten eggs. And I can show you the interpretation. So first shaitan is this shaitan. This is the, the father of all shaitan in the world. So according to Islam, so this is shaitan. Allah saying to him, you have no authority. This is the highest authority of all. The rest are his babies, are like his uh, his, his soldiers. This is the king of all satans. The rest are his babies. You have no authority. And if the king have no authority, that means the, the one who follow who they have no authority too. I mean, they are lower. So this is the king of all evil, Satan himself, Iblis. He have no authority over my slaves. How this has happened to Muhammad? Um, so this says Iblis, uh, not Satan? No, Iblis is the first Satan. Iblis is the father of all Satan. So, so when this says that uh, Iblis has no authority, it does not say sh uh, Shaitan has no authority. Lady, Iblis is the highest authority of Satan because he is their father. He is the king, their king. So if the king cannot do it, the one who is lower than him, he can do it. Everyone is I under the king. You know, is, if I am saying to a king, you have no authority to do that, you cannot do that. That's it. Which means you and your soldiers, you cannot do that. That's it. So Shaitan, he cannot do that. Okay, then, then if uh, Muhammad, uh, as you say, um, um, was this, um, then why did he give to the poor and why okay. did he give? Before we go, before we go there, before we go there, lady, I, I, I like your, your, your response. Before we go there, I want to mention something. You see here, when we say that Muhammad, he made this verse, or the Quran saying this verse, any any satanic verses are he throw, I will take it off. How I know that this verse itself is not made by Satan? The Muslim, they start complaining. They say to him, you said to us, you worship Allah alone. Why you did they say uh, the, the, the three daughters of Allah? 
So Muhammad, in order to cover himself, he made this verse says, never we send all messengers before me heaven to them, but this is not true. Never happened to Moses, never happened to Isa, never happened to any prophet that shaitan, he put satanic verses in their mouth. And this verse, there is no way it can be from God because God here confirming, which is according to the Quran, his God, that satanic verses was given and he will take it off. But this is obviously shaitan. Shaitan saying, don't worry, don't worry. This verse, we will take it off. Here we go, we will take it off. And any, any verse shaitan he gave to Muhammad, we will take it off. But how you can trust Muhammad after now that this verse itself is not coming from shaitan? If Muhammad, he got shaitan verses first time, he can get it second time. Where, where was Allah when Muhammad received satanic verses? He was asleep? Uh, he allowed it to happen. Thank you very much, guys. Did, he, did you hear it? He allowed it to happen, but isn't it the other verse in the Quran says you have no authority over my my servants? <laughs> so how he allowed it to happen? <laughs> okay, so I don't know the answer to this, but okay. I'll ask someone. And, All right. Uh, but before we go, before we go, you, you want to talk about the good deeds, I know. But let us, uh, because we want to connect the dots for you to make it more clear. Was Muhammad controlled ever by black magic? Uh, it was a sickness. Sickness or black magic? It, it, black magic is sickness. Black magic is sickness. It's called bewitch. How how that is sickness? Is that a sickness? You take a drugs for it? You take aspirin so or sick for um uh for uh, for some time and then after uh, he was healed by Allah. Okay, but is it really sickness or black magic, which is, uh, 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 you know, the shaitan? <clears throat> uh, um, black magic is from uh, uh, humans. They, 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 they perform the black magic. Well, no, you see, the black, the black magic, the first one who touched black magic, Allah, he opened a holy water school in the Babylon Tower. Is that correct? Uh, it was... Um, with... Uh, uh, well, the, the, the two angels yes the two angels and then the two angels they taught they taught the shayateen too read the verse chapter 2 verse 102 Allah he sent two angels Harut and Marut and they opened Holy Water School in the Babylon Tower next to Saddam Hussein house and then they taught magic teach magic and then this is in the Babylon and then shaitan he used those magic to harm people you see they followed Where's, that. It they, does not say that the shaitan. Read the Quran. Um, okay, okay, let, let's read. Let the shaitan was teaching them. No, no problem. No problem. It says huh? the the they followed what the shaitan, the devils, gave them falsely of the magic. Do you see that shit on the screen? This is your Quran. This is your, this is your Islamic translation. The, the, the men did it, not shaitan. But listen, listen. Does it say there? They followed what the shaitan, the devil, gave out falsely of the magic. Does it say that? Yes. Okay, yes, thank the you. man did it, not the shaitan. Okay, the man did it. The man, guys, the man did it. The man did it. Okay, but the man did it. Did what? Um, do black magic. Okay, what is a black magic? It's like a evil uh, power. Evil power. Um, we go back to zero. You are the one who mentioned to me that Allah He said to His servant. That you it's have the same black magic in the Bible where uh, uh, the Pharaoh turned the stick into snake. No, you see, the, the, this is not the black magic. We don't believe in black magic. In the Bible, is speaking about that the magic of Moses, Moshe, overcome the magic of the Pharaoh, which means for them, they thought that this is a magic. For us, this is a miracle of God. This is not a magic. We don't believe ma magic is a lie. So here, you Muslims believe in a magic. And the one who taught the first school is Allah. Why Allah is teaching magic? Do you know? Uh, it's to test uh, mankind. Thank you very much. Allah is testing Muhammad? Why not? Okay. By doing what exactly? How he tested him? What the black uh, magic What the black magic did to Muhammad? Let us see how this, this test work. It shows if he uh, if um, if he still stays with the faith. Okay. But look what the magic did to him. Did not affect his faith. Affect his private part. Read carefully with me. The Prophet continued for such and such period of time, imagining that he had sexual intercourse with his wife, but in fact he did not. Is that is that the faith in Islam? Is your private the private part of a man? Is Muhammad religion in his private part? Uh, where does it say that? This is Sahih al-Bukhari, 
And this is the hadith number. I'm showing you the screen. The Prophet continued for such and such a period of time, imagining that he had uh, slept between two brackets, has sexual relation with his wives, and in fact he did not. Why Allah doing that to the Muhammad private part? What does this have to do with the, with the trial of a religion? The guy is still he is a prophet, and now he imagined himself doing things, so he lost his mind. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari, Hayat number 6063. And this is not only for sex, for everything. So look what, what, uh, what, what you are saying to me. Allah, he allowed this to happen. Allah, he sent two angels to open a school to teach black magic, and black magic will be affected the prophet, and the prophet will start imagining that he had done a thing, but in fact he did not. Which means the prophet, he lost his mind. And now we need to ask ourselves, if the prophet, he imagined things, how we can trust that he saw angel, he heard the angel, the angel talked to him, the guy, he lost his mind, he's, he's crazy. Um, so the, um, the reason why we can trust is that the Quran gives a, 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 an evidence that no mankind can uh, produce something like it. We just showed you that Omar and Shaitan, they produce. What do you want more? <laughs> We just showed you that. How you repeat the same thing? I just showed you that Omar, Muhammad copy from Omar, many verses in the Quran. And here we go, Shaitan, he is making Quran. And Muhammad, the last one to notice. And the verse about Allah will delete the satanic verses. Maybe this one too is from Shaitan to make us relax and will not go over it. And here now we find that Muhammad is a crazy man. He lost his mind. Listen, if I say to you, if I say to you, lady, lady, I do not know your name. I want to speak to you really with respect. But I want you to listen to me carefully. If I say to you, let's say you are a doctor, and I am a person coming to you. I say, okay, my name is a Christian. I imagine myself seeing somebody talking to me. What you will say to me? Be honest. I imagine. And it's it's true, I imagine. It's not true, which means it's not. I don't see anyone really. I'm imagining. What do you think? What do you will say to me? Uh, what, what is your opinion as a doctor, as a, somebody educated, smart, and I need your help. I imagine myself speaking to people or even uh, uh, make a relationship with my wife, but in fact, it, it did not happen. What you will say to me? What happened to me? So it depends. So if it, it, it could either be a, a, like a natural explanation, like schizophrenia okay. or a, 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 a like that, or it could be supernatural, like, like a divine test or from, for, or from, uh, like, from like Allah or, or jinn or something like that. Okay. Hold on guys. It can be that Muhammad, he have two different personality and he is mentally ill. Or it can be that it is a, a trial from Allah. Okay, hold on. Oh, How but hold on. But if you go on, if you go to the Quran in Surah uh, Al-Nasr, mm -hmm. uh, it says, um, when there comes Allah's victory and conquest, mm -hmm. and you see the people entering Allah's religion in multitudes, and we see that today, um, people entering Islam, um, the deen al haq hmm. um, and, and, and that's actually a, a prophecy that, that came true. So that's how we know. First of all, this is, this is not a prophecy. This is about the time of Muhammad. They enter into Islam when he became victorious and he going to kill anyone who will not convert. So you just get your prophet busted. This is, not a, this is not a prophecy. This is in his time. You can open the interpretation. And you see the people enter Allah religion in crowd when? When victory came, victory came. This is in the time of Muhammad. He attacked them. He killed. He killed the the, the Musaylama, and now he became victorious, and nobody enemy against him. And now everybody is coming to Islam by tens of thousands. Before they were rejecting, they don't want to believe. And then when Muhammad died, everybody left almost. And then they start the war of upper state to force them to go back to Islam. And you know the story, I'm sure. Now, so this is not a prophecy. This is a stupid prophecy because this has happened in his time. How this can be prophecy? But let me show you a prophecy. As long as you are mentioning a prophecy. Do you know where hail is coming from? Hail? Yeah. From the sky. From where? From the sky. Yeah, but where exactly? Um, it says hail is generated in a thunderstorm. Thank and you. It is really just so frozen. Is, so if I if I say to you that my dad he taught me, uh, or my teacher taught me, uh, that there is mountains and uh, uh, God he break hail from it and he throw it at us. What you will say? It, if it's literal, then Lit it would be false. Okay. Well, this is literal. Here we go. This is your prophet. He is talking about how the rain come and how the hail come and he is saying 
that and look the Muslim they try to cover the shame they oh, they say sky hill like mountains there's no like there's no similar to mountains it is from mountains and let us open the interpretation just to show you how you how Muslims they try to uh, 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 translate a specific translator how to try to fool poor people who don't understand Arabic this is the tafsir you see I'm reading your Islamic website just to show you how the shame work I feel really sorry for those Muslims like this lady she is I can tell she is a good lady you know she is she is a victim of of the lies chapter 24 verse number 43 in front of your eyes I would do I would do the read interpretation 24 43 remember here we go this is the official government website of the kingdom of Jordan and the reason I'm using it because it's in English they have English translation that's all otherwise all websites are the same for me let us hope it's going to open because this website sometimes it takes time to open we can open Ibn Kathir if this one doesn't work let me go to Ibn Kathir hold on because this one taking for forever <clears throat> And again, I respect that this lady, she said, if this is true, this is literal, this is false. This is cannot be from God. I respect that on you. And I hope that you, you know, you will stand with your words and I believe you will do. <clears throat> because there is no way God will say such a silly thing. I agree with you. All right. Let us go and see. All right. Look like this website start working again. So we will use it. Thank God. All right. I want you to read with me, please. Here we go. This is Tafsir Jalalain in front of your eyes. Haven't you seen God? Blah blah blah. And then he says, and he sent down from heaven out of the mountains min jibalin min is extra that is their in in heaven fiha substitute for min etc i know trying to explain arabic from the heaven with repetition of uh, uh, genitive preparation hail and he sent down and he submit to those who he don't like okay so allah he sent hail from mountains in heaven let us see different interpretation maybe this one is not clear for you let us see ibn abbas the cousin of the prophet the highest of the scholars of islam the one who muhammad he prayed for him to be the ink of scholars hebrew the ummah allah he sent hail from mountains in heaven he break hail and he sent it on us this website is taking forever to open as usual uh, I should make a donation to the king of Jordan so he can get a better host in the website you know like, come on this is Tafsir Ajalain yes this is Ajalain and, re and remember any tafsir you see in English is far away from the tafsir in, in, in Arabic. In Arabic, it's totally different because in English, they try, you, in English they try to make it nicer. Are you going to put up the tafsir huh? Ibn, uh, Ibn Abbas? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to open it, Ibn Abbas, but it's... Uh, the, Ibn Abbas, um, scholars have debated whether it's reliable or not. Okay, what, 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 what scholar is your choice? Uh, you can do... Um, Ibn Kathir. Okay. Here we go. This page here have all the interpretation. Let us see. This is Ibn Kathir.
So do you agree with Ibn Kathir? Is Ibn Kathir your best scholar? He's one of the, like the top okay. scholars. But what making um, what he, what making the top? Uh, his just his level of um, study and uh, the amount of work he put into his. Uh, Okay. And, so, um, so if Ibn Kathir says something stupid, you will reject him, or you will accept him. Uh, he's still a man. Uh, we don't re accept everything he says. Okay. But so, who, it, who is the it, one who is qualified to explain the Quran for you? Because I'm really, I'm trying to be uh, uh, fair with you. Can we accept Ibn Kathir for anything, or only it's a mood stuff? Like it's depend what you like. If it, if it matches with what the Quran says, and well, the Quran uh, says the, the Quran says in Arabic clearly, min jibal in fiha. Mean baradin fayusib. There's no like uh, like mountains. There's no where it says the similar of okay. mountain. But so we go to chapter three, uh, verse uh, uh, verse three. It says, uh, sorry, chapter three, verse seven. It says, "It is He who revealed to you the book. Some of verses, it is uh, some of, of of its verses are the definitive. Mm. They are the foundation of the book, and mm. others are unspecific." Mm. As for those in whose hearts are uh, is deviation, mm. they follow the unspecific part, seeking dissent mm. and seeking to derive an interpretation. Mm. But none knows its interpretation except Allah. Okay, so look what you just said. You just got your prophet busted because this is mean. Muhammad saying that I say things nobody can explain save Allah. So why he say it to us? If this is a message to be given to us so we can understand about God, and then there's nobody will understand the message of God. So what's the point of this message of God? Yet you are saying that this, this Quran have a lot of verses with its mutashabihat and the purpose of them to make us sick. I thought the Quran is a healing book for the believers and for people to, to believe. So how this book is going to heal me, but it's full of things which is can be make me, making me sick. So this is cannot be from God. This is obviously from Shaitan again, because God will not send me a book to to fool me and to make me sick. Read carefully what you just said. Some of the verses, some of the verses, nobody knows their meaning save Allah. What the purpose of them? What the purpose? That those it's to seek fitna, seek fitna. But look here in the between translation, this says the polytheism. That's that's false. Because the one who believe in the Quran is the one who will have the fitna, not those who don't believe in the Quran. The one who don't believe in the Quran, he will laugh at it. Those who believe in the Quran, they will not understand the meaning of the verses. So that will make them having sickness. What kind of God he says such a thing? Same time. So, so we, would you would you say that you understand every verse from the Bible? My, my, my friend, I understand with God, he speaks to us. The, the Bible is a private message, which means every every word Jesus, he speak, he speak to you as a person, which means you have your own life, you have your own experience, you have your own uh, 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 ability, and God, he speak to you, he go down to your level. The, 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 the Bible is not a book you sing, uh, uh, you know, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells all the way, and then nobody understands what he's saying. The Bible is a message to you, private message. So you can go and read any verse Jesus said, you will see how amazing it is. So, so then why are there like Catholics, Protestants, and Orthodox? Well, that, if, they, if God speaks in the same way. Well, that's a wonderful question. Still, that will not change anything because being, being different will not make us not the Christians because being different will make us Jesus said whoever believe in me will go to heaven but the Quran your prophet said that my nation will be 73 sect and only one of them will go to heaven which mean 71 sect is the Jews 72 sect is uh, the Christians 73 sect is the Muslims and only one will go to heaven and this is Sahih Hadith as you see in the screen so the most divided belief, according to your prophet, not to me, is Islam. So if your argument why there is a Catholic and Protestant, still Christianity doesn't make any difference. Whoever believe in me and I will live in Islam, no. There is 73 sect. Only one will go to heaven. Which one is the minority? Because Muhammad, he says, بدأ الإسلام غريبا وصفا يعود غريبا. Islam starts as a small, strange religion and will end as a small, strange religion. Few only will believe. And as you see, only one small, tiny sect will go in heaven. The rest will go to hell. Now, which one? Each one of them says, I am the one who will go to heaven. And 
the funny you just quote for me a verse from the Quran saying that Allah he put sickness in the heart of the Muslims so he will divide them and make them sick and then only one will go to heaven what kind of God that that the, the Quran says that happens to the Christians what is that what is that say again the Quran says the Christians will be divided the, the Quran okay hold on let me show you what the Quran is saying the Quran is saying that Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians so he can divide them correct is that true between them yes who is the one who will spread the hatred between them uh, Allah thank you so what shaitan do for living if Allah spread hatred between us what shaitan is doing for living what is the no, job? Allah, what is the job? Allah does it. Allah does it by sending uh, a Satan as a trial. Okay, so Shaitan he worked for Allah, and Allah is the boss. Thank you very much, guys. We have the big even, boss. Even the Bible says that. Hold on, no, 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 no. You see, first of all, you are making things up. It says, the the verse. I can show you. The first, hold on, the verse saying, and the, from those who call themselves Christians, we took their covenant, but they have uh, abundant good part of it, a message, etc. So we planted among them enmity and hatred, where it says that Allah He sends Shaitan. He, it says we. Yeah, the, how He does it is by sending uh, Shaitan. Okay, do Allah want us to convert to Islam, or He want us to stay Christians and be be wrong? Uh, he wants uh, everyone to convert to Islam okay so how this is will work if you are spreading hatred between us and enmity until judgment day how that will help me to become a Muslim it's because uh, the, they the Christians their hearts are 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 are, are stone okay but this, so, but this is not the Quran saying the Quran saying the most close to the Muslims is those who they are the Christians this is contradiction but the Quran says uh, you uh, you can't take them as uh, uh, um, people who protect you from war. Exactly. So, exactly. You can't take them a friend because Allah is shaitan. He don't want you to be a friend to me. So Christ, he said to me, pray for the Muslims, love the Muslims, be good to the Muslims. Allah says, don't be a friend to the Christians. Don't be, be nice to them. You know, kill them wherever you find them. Even your prophet, he said. Well, let me ask you, if I, if you see a Christian in the street, are you going to push him in the mud? No. Why not? That's very. Uh, that's not what Islam teaches. But but is that is that like because you are a good person or because is not Islam teaching? What does Islam teach you? It's to to respect all religions and beliefs. Okay, um, I'm going. I'm going to commit suicide if you can show me where it says that. Here we go. This is your prophet saying. If you see a Christian or a Jew in the street, you have to force him to walk in the sewage. You have to harass him and you have to force him to walk in the sewage. Don't greet the Jews and the Christians. That, Don't. Maybe during war. No, this isn't the street. People walk in the street. This is what war? People walk in the street. This is war. People Where walk is in... the background of this hadith? It doesn't matter. People walk in the street. I am walking in the street and I am a Christian. Why you want to force? He, he's not saying force the soldiers. He is not saying force the bad person. No, he's saying don't greet the Jews and the, anyone is a Jew, anyone is a Christian. Don't greet them, and 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 then if you uh, 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 when you see them, force them to walk in the sewage. What kind of a prophet this prophet is? And you are the one who said this is against Islam. Uh, that's during war. My friend, you are always in war with the Christians. You just read for me the Quran saying Allah will spread hatred and enmity until judgment day. So you are yes, saying to me, you know, no, you see, you, you, you are now trying to cover up for your prophet. You, in the beginning, you said this is disgusting and now it's okay. So you are saying during war, if I go right now to Indonesia and I'm an American citizen, we can force the Muslims to walk in the sewage. This is what you are saying. Allah won't give you that power. Hmm. So it's okay for you now to force a Christian to walk in the sewage. Allah gave you the power. Okay. Suddenly it became an okay. When I asked you, you said this is not good. Not good. If it's during war, then, it, then where it says then, during war, where it says during war, it says if you see them in the street, what war? Yeah, so they're they're your enemies, right? They are walking in the street. What enemy living with you in the town? 
Why does he say that? Well, they, they are walking in the street. They are greeting you, actually. He's saying, don't greet them. Don't greet them. Somebody in war, he will greet you, say to you, Shalom. Don't you see? Don't you read? Do you know how to read? Don't greet them. Don't say peace to them. What is war? Okay, um, I'll ask um, someone about this hadith. Mm, what he will say to you? He will say to you, yeah, sister, you know, those Christians, we should humiliate them. Isn't it the Quran in chapter 9, verse 29, says that you have a duty to humiliate the Christians? During war. Okay, after you enter the, my city, let us say, you, the Muslim came to my city, they surrounded the city, they said, surrender to, 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 to our army. After you enter the city, still you are going to force me to walk in the sewage or no? If we're still during, if we're still in war, then then maybe. You just took my city. Still in war. There's civilian inside. There's no soldiers. You want to? Well, you wanna... if, you're try, if you're trying to attack me, or 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 lady, 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 that. lady, no Christian attack your prophet. He is the one who came to their cities, occupied them. Look how false you Muslims are. So you are saying to me, you come to my town. You attack my town, you take my town, and then you force me in the sewage, and you say this is okay. Yeah, I don't know about that. Okay, let me you know what I will give you. I will give you a, a good chance to defend your your cult. You said to me the Quran proved until now you gave me nothing proving the Quran to be from God. We showed you that Omar making Quran, Shaitan making Quran, and Muhammad he have no idea what they are saying. And even you gave me a clear proof that the Quran full of verses, nobody knows what they mean because Muhammad obviously is a thief. Uh, and why Muhammad you do not know? Even Muhammad do not know what the mean of the Quran. Have you ever heard of a prophet you do not know? As an example, the Muslim they claim that the Quran full of scientific verses. Is that true? The, the Quran talks about the Big Bang. Okay, the Big Bang. Guys, the Quran speak about the Big Bang. Okay, guys, the Quran speak about the Big Bang. So Muhammad must be a liar because Muhammad, he said the following. You see how many Muslims you help me to expose your prophet? How many, how many Muslims will leave Islam today? Let us see how many. This is your prophet explaining the Big Bang, which you are claiming that Islam is speaking about it. Muslims fabricate stories. They lie to themselves with my respect to you. Look what your prophet said. Who said that? Your prophet, not me. How Allah created the earth and the heaven? Read with me, please. Do you see the screen? I see it, but it's not up yet. All right. This is your prophet, and this is Sahih Hadith. This is Sahih Muslim. Allah exalted the glory, the glorious, created the clay on Saturday. The Big Bang says Allah He created the clay on Saturday. Is that what the Big Bang says? Uh, so the Big Bang is talk is basically like a uh, expansion mm. of of matter. No, and no, no. The big the Big like Bang. No, the Big Bang is nothing. Ex is, is, there's no matter can was exist and there's explosion happened and everything exists it's, in the same time no 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 hold on according to you, okay listen listen so according to the big bang is the first thing became exists is the clay in saturday yes or no it may have ah so big bang guys the big bang theory believe in saturday so the first day was saturday and the first thing was created the big bang is is is, is, is a clay okay second day allah created the mountains third day on sunday and then allah he created the trees on monday and then he created the the entire labor in tuesday and he created the light in wednesday this is what the big bang saying uh the big bang isn't complete yet so so scientists are still studying about it ah so they will discover there's a saturday and sunday and big and uh, and the light in wednesday and uh, etc later right Yes. Oh, okay, exactly. That's very smart of you. But let me ask you, how many days took Allah to create the, uh, the, the earth and the heaven? Uh, six days? Six days. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, the Quran says six days, exactly. So how Muhammad, how many days here in the Hadith? How your prophet, he say what he just said. Because if we count the words here, how many days, we will find that there are seven. Read with me carefully. Yeah, 
if, if a hadith contradicts the Quran, then it, it's not reliable. Well, isn't it the Quran is a hadith too? In the hadith uh, in the Quran, it, it, the, the word hadith is not talking about the hadith of of Muhammad sallallahu No, it's, it is. It's basically no. It is about Muhammad. It's the one who said that is Muhammad. Yes, but the but but the word hadith came before the Sunnah, uh, like when it, when it, when it was compiled. Wait, my, my, so my, lady, had, lady, lady, had, lady, lady you, have, you have no idea what you are talking about. The Quran itself is a hadith. Isn't it the Quran says the best of the books is is a hadith? The best yes, of the what, hadith. What does hadith mean? It means speech. Speech. Thank you very much. So both of them coming from Muhammad. So if Muhammad speaks something, doesn't matter what is Quran or or normal uh, 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 speech. It has to be when truthful. The Quran, when the Quran talks about hadith, it's talking about Allah's speech, not Muhammad's speech. Thank you, but isn't it Allah He speak on Muh through Muhammad? So are you saying Muhammad is making things up now? Your prophet, when he said Allah created the the, the clay in Saturday, he was lying. This is not Allah saying uh, that. Yeah. So if if the Quran, uh, if the hadith contradicts the Quran, then the hadith is not reliable. Hmm. Is, so is the Quran reliable? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you. Uh, According to the Quran, where the sperm of the man is coming from? Uh, I'm not sure. What do you think, according to science? I, I'm not a doctor to say, sorry. But you've been in school before, no? I have, but I, I, I'm not a, a professional. Aren't you, aren't you a lady adult? I am okay. So now maybe maybe I don't know if you are married or not. So you do not you never heard where the sperm of the man came from. Well, I have an idea, but I'm not sure. Okay, what is the idea? I'm what is the idea a, you have? We are talking about science now. There is no shame. So where is where is the sperm is coming from? Well, firstly, um, uh, sorry, what? Where is the sperm of the man coming from, and what the sperm will be? Uh, the sperm, um comes from the male genitalia okay is it coming from the uh, testicles of the man and around uh, it i'm not i'm not a, a doctor so okay. i wouldn't know according to the quran the sperm of the man is coming from the back uh, as i'm aware of no okay so how the quran says women have a sperm coming from their chest location that may be talking about uh breast milk Breast nut? What breast what? Breast milk. Uh, so now the, the, the milk became a sperm? I will open for you your favorite scholar, Ibn Kathir, the one you like. Let us see what Ibn Kathir said. About okay. what, how Allah, how Allah, He made the baby come to exist. Here we go. This is Ibn Kathir, not me. He is a created you from water gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid come from out, out bursting forth from the man and the woman. From what? From the man and the woman. It's a sexual and a fluid and the bursting forth. So it's coming out. This is orgasm, which is false. Because the women orgasm is not will make the baby. <laughs> Thus the child produced from both of them by permission of Allah. Continue. Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. Which is referring to the hair chest. Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. The backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. I, uh, it the fluid is yellow and fine in texture this is for the women and the child will not be born except from both of them i.e their sexual fluid do you believe in this madness again i'm not a doctor to say whether this is right or wrong okay i will give you ten thousand years to search the internet and you will find that this is nothing but garbage there's no way this can be from god a man he claimed that women have orgasm and that yellow fine texture will make the baby if we go to the hadith, which is not contradicting the Quran, so you don't have the excuse now to say contradict the Quran, your prophet said, 
that if the women have orgasm first, the baby will be like her, uh, uh, like her, which means a female, and look like her. If the man have orgasm, the baby will look like him. Do you agree with that? Uh, if Muhammad said it, then yes. Okay, but that means Muhammad is a false prophet because this is absolutely false. Everybody is laughing. This is far away from any scientific fact. Everybody is going crazy. Look what people are saying in the chat. So my, my lady, you are trying just because you are a Muslim, whatever Muhammad is. Say so you accept even if it's funny and stupid. Okay, let us make it simple for you. So Muhammad, if Muhammad is saying that, you agree with it. Is that, is that okay? Anything Muhammad yeah. is saying, you agree with it. Okay, now, yeah. if, if we ask you, in the heaven of Allah, in the heaven of Allah, What Allah will give you as a woman? Uh, I am anything uh, we desire, we will uh, obtain in, 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 in Jannah. Okay. Is that including if a woman, she like to have sexual relationship with a woman? Uh, so the Jannah of Allah is pure. Um, so if, if, if people desire these things, then mm -hmm. Allah... Subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow him, uh, them to enter Jannah. Mm, you just told me anything you desire. You just told me anything you desire. And now you are saying to me, if you desire something Allah don't agree with, he will not give it to you. So, so it was a, a fraud uh, promise. No, if you desire something good, then Allah will give it to you. Ah, only if it's good. Okay, like what? Look what your prophet uh, saying. This is Jami al turmudi Your prophet saying, indeed, in paradise there is a market in which there is no buying nor selling except for images of men and women. This is the first Playboy magazine in the space. So whenever a man desire an image, he enter it. You're a prophet promising men, not you. A Playboy magazine have images of men and women. Is this hadith sahih or all the hadith which is embarrassing are not sahih? I guarantee you. I just showed you a hadith is sahih. You said you rejected a second ago. You forgot not everything from Sahih Bukhari is, is hadith. Here is we sahih. go, guys. You know, is this hadith is sahih? I just showed you a hadith is sahih. You didn't accept it. Yes, because it contradicts the Quran. So, how it is sahih but it's contradict the Quran because sahih means it's authentic. No, uh, not everything in Sahih Bukhari is, 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 is Sahih. Lady, lady, it is authentic. Authentic mean what? It means it is checked and it passed and it is the Prophet who said that. So how it can be authentic? The Prophet said it and yet you don't accept it. So we don't know if the Prophet said it. So how you know that this hadith is not said by the Prophet? How you know the Quran said by the Prophet anyway? Oh, because it, it's in chain. We have it's in chain. Well, the hadith, hadith I just showed you, the one before it, it was in chain. It says Sahih, and you reject it. Well, it, it contradicts the Quran, so then it's well, not correct. Okay, so okay. if something contradicts the Quran, we should not accept. You agree? If something contradicts the Quran, then okay. we cannot accept it. All right. There's nowhere in the Quran it says that the muta is not to be practiced no more. Can you show me a verse that says don't do muta no more? Well, it says zina is wrong. No, so, I'm not talking about zina. Zina is, is so. Are you saying muta is zina? Well, it is right now. Ah, oh, muta is, is guys. Muta is adultery right now. So Allah He approved adultery but, in the time of Muhammad. But but during the time of the Prophet, hmm. it was not. Ah, in the time of the Prophet, it was a holy thing to do. Now it is haram. Why it's haram now? Because it was only for during war. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. You can rent women during war? It's not renting. It's essentially, it's because men have like a desire. Uh -huh. um, who said it's, so, who said it's not renting? Who is the one who said that? You or somebody told you that? Um, I'm not... I, I have to uh, okay here we go this is your Islamic website this is islam.org read with me in the screen please this is your Islamic you know website written by your your leaders explain to us al muta the pillars of muta it says here that muta is a kind of rental 
it is kind of what rental in defining rental read carefully with me this is not me talking this is you muslims talking about the muta let us see how muslims they rent muta rent rent women allah he is allowing muslim to rent women muslim women are rented by muslim men legally and she is saying it's okay in that that time of muhammad it says in some work special term is applied to women to who participate in muta musta'jara which mean rented rented women muta is considered as a kind of rental because in general a man basic aim is kind of marriage is sexual enjoyment so you are saying to me that your prophet he was in war he allowed muslim women to rent themselves to men to have boom boom with them and that is okay if it's during war then i don't see a problem with it so the, the woman who take off her panty because somebody gave her five dollars during war is she is a good woman I, I do not know. I have to uh, okay. ask. You see, I will go with your with your answer, which is I find it very silly. Muslims now in war everywhere. It is war in Iraq. There is war in Libya. There is war everywhere. Can Muslim men rent Muslim women? Uh, no, it was only during the time of the Prophet. But you just say this is because of war. So war is exist. Nothing changed. So why in the time of the Prophet was okay and now it's not okay? If this is the reason, the war. Well, they are in war. There's war in Iraq, there's war in Syria, there's war in Yemen, there's there, there, there's war in, in Egypt, there's war everywhere. So I can rent women or I cannot. Uh, I'm not really sure. So uh, um, I can probably ask someone and then I can uh, tell uh, tell you what they told me. Okay, let me ask you. The Shia, they still practice muta. Why? And the Muslim Sunni, they are not practicing muta. Why? Uh, the Shia um, don't accept the hadith that. Okay, that but you are the one, hold on, but you are the one who said to me, if the hadith contradict the Quran, we will not accept. The muta is a verse in the Quran. The hadith says that the Prophet, he forbid the muta. So how you, you see, look how, look what you did to yourself. How you a second ago, you rejected the hadith because you said it's, it's contradict the Quran, I don't accept it. But yet you accept the hadith about the muta, which contradict the Quran. The Shia says that Zina is wrong. Okay, hold on. There's nowhere in the Quran that says muta is Zina. The Quran says you can rent women and you can pay them money for enjoying it, which means their private part. So you are the one shooting yourself in the foot. You said if a hadith reject the uh, uh, contradict the Quran, you reject the hadith. Look what happened now. You are rejecting the Quran because of a hadith. Um, so when when the Quran says something and um, the Hadith says something different, hmm. um, then you have to then you have to reject the Hadith. But the the Quran does say that Zina is wrong, and so that Hadith is supporting <laughs> Zina. Like, no, 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 no. You see, don't fabricate things. First of all, if Allah says you do muta, how you can call this is Zina? Shame on you. With my respect to you, I don't want to insult. You are insulting Allah now. Don't do that, please, in front of me. That's haram. If Allah says you do muta, and now you are saying muta is zina, so you are saying to me that Allah in the time of Muhammad says do zina. She hung up. <laughs> Call me back. Do you see how they play games? We don't debate Muslims. You know, we, we, we have to, they play games. It's like a cat and, and, and a mice. You know, you have to go in the corner, try to hold them from their tail. No honesty. When they want, they reject. When they want, they accept. When they want, she do not know. She is a lady. And she do not know where the sperm of the man is coming. She do not know if the women have a sperm or not. Suddenly, she do not know. She's a baby. She's six months old. She never heard of this before. Taqiyya, to defend Islam. This is the truth.
But you know, I respect this lady. She is way more brave than those potatoes who call them their growing beard. Look, you see, I spoke to her kindly. I go down to her level with the education. And still I respect her because she is more brave than all those men who claim to be men. Is that, is that right? She is a woman. She is better than those sheikhs who have long beard. They don't dare to call me. Look, I spoke to her nicely. I didn't say anything. And I go down to her level. I'm going with her wherever she go. As if I'm talking to a child. But the most amazing thing, when they try to defend, they shoot their prophet. Not only in his foot, they shot him in private places. She just agreed that muta is a zina. So Allah in the Quran approve and encourage zina. Did you hear it? Fantastic. She hang up because now she said, uh oh, what I did. This is zina. So the hypocrite now they accept the hadith which is contradict the Quran. But when they want, they say, we don't accept the hadith is contradicting the Quran. That is Islam, my friend. Islam is, there is a God, his name is Allah. He asks his followers to rent women. And those women are good believers. A good woman, she rent her private part. The Prophet of Allah, he said, any believing person, they agree to have muta. Let them do muta. Three days, three nights. If they like to increase, they increase. Read carefully. This is Al Bukhari. This is Al Bukhari. Any man, if a man and a woman agree to do muta, even the name muta, you know what muta mean? It's a shame. Muta is a sexual joy. Do sex, do muta. <laughs> if a man and a woman agree to do boom boom for three days, in, you are in war, and now you have time to have boom boom for three days. What kind of war this war is? There is no war, and let us say there is a war. You are not the first one who go in war, and they have wives. So now you are saying to me. Uh, if I am going away from my home and my wife with me, okay, I can rent a woman in the hotel. I go to Las Vegas, I rent a woman. Because I am in war. Any man, any woman, they agree to do boom, boom for three days. Let them do three, three days, three nights. And if they like to increase, they increase. And here we need to ask ourselves, how he make it lawful and then how he make it unlawful because people they start laughing at him this guy he claimed to be a prophet of god claiming to that he brought decency but look what he's doing they are jumping in the top of each other as if they are cats women they became sex toys men they became pimps this is islam and this is why she hang up because she found that she got her prophet busted with no mercy. <clears throat> but I'm so happy that she said clearly that muta is zina. We cannot do muta now because it is zina. Allah forbid zina. We have the prophet of zina. Take a note, please. This lady, I think she's from Indonesia, I don't know. She confirmed that the Prophet of Allah is a Prophet of Zina. She confirmed that the Prophet of Allah receives satanic verses. She confirmed that Omar, he made Quran before Allah. And when Omar, he said, this is not Quran. But when Allah, he said, the word of Omar, this is Quran. <laughs> it's a priceless quote. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, always when you speak to a Muslim, uh, you, you you have to go you have to go with their uh, you have to give them a hope. It's like doing fishing. 
don't make them don't hit in the head right away let it's like a the snowball hmm? let the snowball go big until it became a mountain and then he will find himself trapped this is what we have to do zina mean adultery fornication Zina means fornication. So this is the prophet of fornication, the god of fornication. He allowed Muslim women to rent it, to rent, to rent. Yeah. Who can make Quran like this Quran? This is the most stupid Quran. What Quran? This is the most stupid, funny book. We are the Arab Christian. We are laughing at this book from the first day. And after all the occupation and pain, jizya and humiliation, is still we rejected it because it's stupid. Otherwise, why, why we reject it if it's amazing and it's, it's garbage? What is this? Yeah, the Muslim they give us dislike. That's an honor for us. That's mean we are doing a great job. You see the Muslims when they come to my page right away they give this like Christians they don't do that Christian you have to ask them like you know can you give like and I'm not going to do that I mean you do like you don't like I don't care I don't even keep my videos <clears throat> feel free to call me back lady and you are welcome you know I, res I respect that you are brave more than the rest of the Muslims at least at least you are better more brave than those who have a beard and they are six foot tall and they call themselves Mimi and they wear a pink t-shirt and they go to the and they claim that you are finished boy you are finished yeah she's more brave than them look she dared to call me From the first page in the Quran to the last page of the Quran is a stupid book. The Prophet, Allah, he allowed the black magic to be in the Prophet. Look at this madness. Okay, hold on. To do what? As a trial. Trial for what? Her pri his private part? I thought Allah, he sent a dish of shish kebab. He ate it. He got the power of 40 men. How now Allah want to make his private part? Flat. Hmm? The prophet of fornication. I promise to explain to you, Nasara. Thank you very much. Yeah, I did not forget, but we got this call here. Anyway, the Quran says. that the Hawariyin of the Messiah, they said to the Messiah, نَحْنُ أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ آمَنَّ بِاللَّهِ This is Nasara, Ansar, which means we are the helpers of Allah. And here, this is another disaster in the Quran. Then when Isa came to know of their disbelief, he said, who will be my helpers in Allah cause? Helper. This is Nasara. And now anyone notice the stupidity? Additional that we are not Nasara. Forget about we are not Nasara now. Who here notice the stupidity in this story? In the word Nasara specifically. Let us see which one of, of us is a very smart thinker. Anyone knows? There is something very bad here. Very stupid. Get Muhammad busted. I'm going to log off uh, Skype because she will not call for sure. And I don't want to talk more. Anyone notice the problem? There is something very bad. Okay, hold on. The Muslim today, they call us Nasara, correct? 
They call us Nasara, right? Okay. Do you know what the Muslims are calling us? The helpers of Allah. I mean, how stupid are you to say we are going to go to hell and our name yet is the helpers of Allah? <laughs> you see here, we are the helpers of Allah. This is the Nasara here. Yeah? They are translating the word Nasara. We are the helpers of Allah. So the donkey who says, and his name is Muhammad, that the Christians are Nasara, but yet they will go to hell. How are you calling the, Ansar, the, 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 the helpers of Allah, they will go to hell? Because you cannot be, you cannot be the helper of Allah, and yet you will go to hell. That is the most stupid statement ever. This is a statement, even a certified donkey would not say it. It's like I saying to you, you are the helper of the firefighter, but you will go to hell. And how we get the honor to be the helpers of Allah? We are not just, we are not Muslims, we are the helper of Allah. We are higher. You, you know what I'm saying? We are not the same as the Muslims. We are higher. We are the helpers of Allah. Allah need our help. Allah do not need the help of anyone except the Nasara, the Christians, supposedly. How stupid this statement is. But what do you say when a donkey he talk? He don't talk, he do poo poo. It's like saying uh, to Sam Shamoon, the guy with the hair. But he don't have a hair. How you call him Nasara? Are they not, are they still Nasara? Yes, they are Nasara. Huh? But that's mean they, their name is the helper of Allah. Yeah, this is his own. This is this is our interpretation, my friend. Nasara. Yeah, I, I know what Rashid is uh, saying to you. But according to Islam, I'm talking here according to Islam, not according to us. Our explanation is different from the Muslim explanation. But the Muslim explanation is this. And the word Nasara is not about Nasara, no. The word Nasara, the Nazareth, is, is, a, is, a, is a word in Aramaic, uh, uh, or in Hebrew, sorry, which means the poor. The poor. What, who called him the poor? The Christian, they reject those people. They are, they are a Christian cult, like Jehovah's Witnesses. So they call them the poor because they have a poor understanding of the Bible. Muhammad the fool, he do not know what the word means. Eh, Nasara. The same as the word in the Quran when he says that Azar is the father of Abraham. How Azar became the father of Abraham? Because Muhammad the fool, he did not know Aramaic. He think that the word Azar, which means a foolish, is the name of the father of Abraham. But Abraham was saying to his father, Azar, which means foolish. Do you want to worship? This is foolish. It's foolish to worship idols. This is what he's saying. Muhammad was copying the book of Waraq ibn Nufal, who he is saying there that Abraham, he said to his father, Azar. Muhammad the fool, he thought this is the name of the father. Yeah, the Nazarenes in the in the Bible is different from the Nasara, the Nazara, the Nazarite, which word mean poor. This is a different word. That word is about people who follow the Messiah from the from the city of the Nasira. Anyway, did we have a good time together? Was it good? 
I'm not going to keep you here for long. I mean, you guys in the Philippines, in uh, India, in Indonesia, you must be uh, working now, you know, at work. So I hope we have a good time together and we learn something good. And I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy that this lady, she called me. I really respect that she's trying her best to defend Islam and she is brave. Not like the potato who have a big beard, but they don't dare to call me. They are in intimidated. And she was a great help, actually, to make a lot of Muslims leave Islam. I don't know how many people will watch this video and they will see how Muslims, they defend something they cannot defend. And that makes their defense funny. Desperately. And the more they defend, the more they dig in the sand to expose Muhammad. I will try to be here again tomorrow. God is willing. It's time to go. I want to say thank you guys for your help and support. Don't forget to download the videos. As you know, we don't keep them. Uh, and if you don't like our video, give it dislike. Don't forget. If you like it, give it like. If you like to subscribe, subscribe. But I will give you better advice. Don't subscribe. Because if you subscribe and you and subscribe, Allah will give you a reward, double reward. So if you are a Muslim, I advise you to subscribe, subscribe immediately. And then sub and subscribe right after. This is the logic of Islam. Very silly, stupid cult. So thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And every day we prove that the truth, nobody can hide it. Nobody, no matter how much they make videos to deceive us about science and the Quran, all this garbage. It's very easy to get, get it busted. But be aware that there's many children, they can be falling into the trap they come with. Media is very powerful. And those who never heard us, they are exposed because they didn't know. They didn't speak Arabic. They have no idea what Islam is about. And usually, when somebody is religious with a beard, we think that he's a decent person telling us the truth. They do not know that this is an evil cult and they are willing to lie as much as they can because it's lawful to lie. That's why Islam is very dangerous because people assume that when they speak to a believer, he's speaking to a person who is against lying. Even they will show you the prophet says don't lie, but they will not tell you that the prophet says lie in three cases. One of them to your wife and your family, which is disgusting. The other one to your friends, supposed to fix a problem. And the third one in the case of war. But they will not tell you that Islam is in war with everybody. Anyone reject Islam, Allah in war with him. So if you are a Hindu, Allah in war with you. If you are a Buddha, Allah in war. If you are an atheist Christian, it doesn't matter. Allah in war with anyone. Muhammad, he said, I've been ordered to fight and kill all mankind. For sure, except the Muslims. Until they say there's no God but Allah and there's no prophet but Mumu. And then if they do so, they have to slaughter as we slaughter, eat as we eat, and pray as we pray, and pay as and pay the zakat, and then and only then I will not shed their blood unless by the law of Allah. Even then, nothing will protect their property and their money and their blood unless they convert to Islam. That is Islam. It's a gang, it's Hitler, it's fascism. Actually, let me show you this before we go. Just to give you an idea, final idea. Because still, some people, they are naive and they will not accept that Islam is fascist. Read carefully with me and tell me what do you think? Is that fascism or this is something else? Do you have a name for, do you have different name for this uh, fascism teaching? You are the best of the people ever raised for the benefit of mankind. When you see this benefit of mankind, Muslims are the best for the benefit. Look at the benefit. You see the word benefit? You say, wow, that's good. I mean, obviously, it didn't mean a harm. It says benefit. But look what the benefit of mankind is. Chapter 3, verse 110. The best of all mankind are those who bring them, who? Mankind, with the chain around their necks till they embrace Islam. 
And is that a hadith which is accepted? Yes, this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Is it authentic? Absolutely. This is Hitler. Hitler making a speech saying you are the best of mankind. Go bring everybody with a chin around their neck. This is the truth. With not, without makeup, there's many Muslims, they get, many people, they get upset from me. They say you are very harsh, you are very tough. My friend, our topic is disgusting. We are fighting the god of terrorism. And you people thinking about the mentality of giving me a hug. I I'm not here to give hugs. Some Christians, they have mentality of giving hugs. They think they can bring people to Christ by giving them hugs. You have first to cleanse their brain from all the garbage. Leave the hugs for later. People need the truth, not your hugs. If the whole problem in the world can be solved by hugs, that's it. Everything is good to go. Let us start hugging. So wake up. The best way to do it as we do it. After you clean their brain from the stupidity and hatred and terrorism and the war mentality. And this, you, if you notice, she was talking to me. Yes, uh, if it's in war, I was asking her, is it okay for you to force somebody as a Christian to walk in the sewage? She said, well, it's in war, yes. Do you see how the, the, the Islam teaching you to be fascist? This is a girl saying it's okay for her to force a Christian to walk in the sewage if it's a war time. Even if he's just walking in the street. Islam is a supremacist cult. White supremacist cult. Think that because they are Muslims, they have the right to put a chain around your neck. Force, force you to walk in the sewage. Force you to live like a dog. You are not even an equal to a human being. It's a white Arab supremacist garbage cult. And the second you believe in it, you are part of this mafia. Please download the video, share it with your friends, and enter. We'll see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we'll see you soon again. Take care. Bye-bye.